It's Western Athletic Conference Baseball, and it's here on ESPN+. Plus. Overcast skies, but a warm, windy day in Abilene, Texas. Game two of this three-game series, the Utah Valley Wolverines and the Abilene Christian University Wildcats. Welcome into Crutcher Scott Field on the campus of Abilene Christian University. Andy Penny alongside Coy Oslin for again game two of this three-game set on this good Friday afternoon, evening here in Abilene, Texas. The Wildcats of ACU, they're 15 and 11 on the year, six and four in WAC play. Utah Valley, winners of nine of their last 10. They're back to even in their standings at 13 and 13, five and three in the WAC. The better of ACU last night, Coy, as the Wolverines get the win last night, seven to three. And what a game it was, Andy. Obviously, Utah Valley opened it up with a big home run early on in the game, but ACU came back in that game, tied it all up, and. Even from there, Utah Valley came back late in that game. And like you said to me earlier, you can't sit on a game with a lead 3-2 against either of these two teams. AC scored all three of their runs in the first inning. It was 3-2 after the first. We stayed that way until the seventh, until the big Jaden Smith grand slam to give the uh, Wolverines the lead at 6-3. They went on to win at 7-3. And, Coy, as we look at the Western Athletic Conference standings, just in one night, 24 hours, Utah Valley goes from fifth in the conference they jump up to second in the conference. Cal Baptist goes down last night. Grand Canyon as well. Actually tied for first if you look with CBU. Well, from Riverside to Abilene, Texas, it is a competitive conference, Andy. And I think this is an, a testament to what this conference brings to the table at the mid-major level, where in the middle of the holiday area of this time of year, you have a huge mid-major matchup between two teams that found themselves at the top of that preseason poll. Last night again, 7-3, to three, the final score as Utah Valley was able to get the win. And, boy, you have to look at the pitching matchup last night, a unique setup. Uh, for Utah Valley is Chase Hennessy the start. It's been the tradition, the script all year long for Eddie Smith. He gives the ball to Braden Braver. Braver just puts up seven innings of relief, scoreless relief baseball. He shuts down the ACU uh, staff. Brett Garcia, the tough luck loser, two innings of relief, but on the mound when Utah Valley essentially took the lead. Well, and, you know, you got to give a shout out to Austin Glaze, also the ACU pitcher, a veteran in Rick McCarty's lineup, and he looked great too. But Braden Braver, man, what a job from the right-hander last night for Utah Valley. He came in here and, I mean, absolutely dominated what had been a potent offense all season for Rick McCarty and the Wildcats, Andy. Seven innings of work, no runs, five hits, four strikeouts for Braver in 107 pitches to shut the door. Jacob Beltran came in and shut it down in the ninth, an inning in the third. And again, Utah Valley, the better of Abilene Christian last night, seven to three, the final seven runs, eight hits, two errors for the Wolverines, three runs, eight hits, one error for the Wildcats last night. Coy, we flip the page. We look at game two here on Friday. It's a pair of right-handers on the mound for these two teams. Ethan Folks will get the ball for the Wolverines. Ian Kampa, who's been really good for ACU as of late, he'll take the bump today for the Wildcats. And if you're a Utah Valley fan, Ethan Folks, he might be familiar to you. And if you're an ACU fan, he might be familiar to you. He is very familiar with the WAC. Spent some time at Utah Tech. Spent some time here at Utah Valley in his graduate season. And coming to Abilene to face this ACU lineup. And then you look at the other side of this, ACU has brought another great pitcher to the mound in Ian Campana. And so here we are. In a game, game two, very competitive also. These pitching matchups can't be any better in a three-game set, Andy. Folks, three and one on the year. He'll make his fifth start. Three and one, 6.59 is the ERA for Folks. For Compa, he leads the WAC in victories. He and teammate Brett Landman, both with four victories on the year. Compa is four and one. 2.51 is the ERA as he makes his seventh start uh, on the season for the Wildcats. Utah Valley, again, they come in. They've won their last six ball games over the course of the last 10 days. They've won nine of their last 10 and, again, have pushed into a tie for first place currently in the WAC at 5-2. and two. For the Wildcats, this is not a new script over the course of Western Athletic Conference play. This is the fourth series for ACU. They've dropped game one of all four series. They've bounced back to win games two and games three. I don't think it's a narrative that Rick McCarty necessarily likes, but again, that's how the narrative has played out. They'll get a chance to try to even the series here today. And Andy, I think that can say a lot for a team and what kind of drive they have. You have a team that can go down in game one of a series, whether how big that is against UTA, SFA, whoever, 
and come back and win the series. That's a big thing, Andy. And to, to see what ACU has done with that this season has been impressive. But this is the hardest challenge they've had so far this season. Utah Valley in a series, they're very competitive. They're bringing something here that has not been seen yet so far this season. An offense that averages seven and a half runs a game. The Wolverines of Utah Valley. And here's a look at Ian Kampa, the starting pitcher who will have the task of shutting down that Wolverine offense today at the plate. Kampa, the junior, the transfer out of El Paso. He's been solid again, 4-1 on the year. Yeah, by way of El Paso Community College. And boy, he has made an impact here at ACU. 4-1, two, two innings in 2-5-1 ERA this season for him. Those 30 strikeouts, Andy, 30-10 to 10 on that strikeout-to-walk ratio. That's a big number right there if you don't know much about baseball. And as a righty, he's brought a lot of performance to this mound. And that's something that Rick McCarty has needed throughout the years is someone who can go out every time and pitch well. And this year, he's got that. His last outing was last Saturday at Sacramento State. A five-inning shutout performance. ACU won 9-2. Here's a look at that Wolverine lineup. It has not changed much from last night. Burke Camper will move from catcher to designated hitter. He'll bat third. Isaac Lovings gets the start at uh, catcher today. You can see him in the eighth spot. But uh, there's a look at the lineup. Dickinson, Smith, Camper, Halverson, Bach, Broussard, Jordan, Lovings, and Swartz. And look at the Wildcat defense. Few changes from yesterday. Aaron Staley gets the start in right field. Benjamin Greer has moved from right to third. Gino Delasio has moved across the diamond from third to first, and he will get the start here as well this uh, this evening, this afternoon. So should be in for a good day of baseball. The clouds are overcast today. It, it is warm, 79 degrees here at first pitch. The wind, the West Texas wind, the World famous West Texas wind has been blowing all day today. Probably 20 to 25 miles an hour gust up into the 30s. And looking at the flags, I don't know if it's a hitter's ballpark, kind of pushing out right field pole to left field pole, but uh, we shall see how the ball travels. It traveled well last night as we saw four home runs leave the yard last night. Yeah, and Andy, they say that wind here in West Texas will chap your lips and make you blind, and that's exactly <laughs> what it's doing today. I have the chapstick here on the table with me today. It's funny <laughs> you say that, Coy. As Daniel Dixon, the second baseman, will step in. The only Wolverine that has started now all 27 games for Eddie Smith and the 13-13 13 and 13 Wolverines. Yeah, and Dixon, I mean, what can you say about a guy like him? He's done everything you could ask of him so far this season, and here he is now leading off another game. A sophomore from Richland, Washington. Check swing on an off-speed pitch. 321 the average. Leads the conference in runs scored at 35. Scored one last night as he was hit by a pitch in the first, and he scored in front of the Burt Camper two-run home run. So, so basketball. Second. Sorry, and he's uh, also second in the conference in hits. He's really outperformed, I think, what some people would say he could do this year. And obviously, that preseason all-conference selection, there's a lot that some people thought he could bring. Kampa ahead in the count, one ball, two strikes. Two balls and two strikes. Again, it was last Saturday, Kampa's last outing. He went five innings of scoreless baseball, no runs on four hits, four strikeouts, four walks. So the Wildcats beat Sacramento State 9-2. We'll do 2-2 two -two again after the foul down the third base side. Utah Valley had the two hits in the first inning last night. Did not get their third hit until the seventh, which was a two-out bloop single in that seventh inning by Cole Jordan. Back-to-back -back walks followed, and then Jaden Smith, the grand slam. It turned a 3-2 ACU lead into a Utah Valley 6-3 lead. I think the pressure they mounted in that at-bat, Andy, was a lot to show for what Utah Valley can do. Payoff pitch, stays upstairs. It's a leadoff walk to Dixon. And for the second night in a row, the Wolverines have their leadoff man on in the top of the first. And Andy, here's a guy, he's slugging 624 this season. He can also get on base with the walk. Really an all-around player, someone who's standing out at this mid-major level here in Division I. That'll bring up Jaden Smith, last night's hero. 
the junior left fielder out of Gilbert, Arizona. His batting average dropped 15 points last night from 400 to 385, but I don't think anybody really cared after the seventh inning grand slam to change the narrative. 385 still leads this Wolverine team. That's 25 hits in 65 at bats. Compa starts him off with a fastball. 90 on the radar gun. Well, last night, those three strikeouts, I mean, you find yourself close to that golden sombrero, but you got that grand slam in there. No one's going to ask any questions right there. Compa works out of the stretch first time. That'll stay on the outside. Wolverines lead the whack in stolen bases. Did not attempt a stolen base last night, but do lead the conference 35 out of 39. Dixon leads the conference with 15. He's perfect on the base pass, 15 in a row. Here's a throw over to first. It gets away, not far enough, though, from Delasio. As Dickinson had to dive back in, did not have enough time to pop up and advance. It's really impressed me with Compa so far this season. He looks very comfortable in this position at a high level of baseball. Brings a very calming presence to the mound. Curveball catches the outside corner. Play with the three-man umpiring crew tonight. John Perez is behind home plate. He'll call balls and strikes. Jet Mitten down the first baseline. Clayton Ham will play the left side of the infield. One ball and two strikes. Check swing, they'll appeal down to first. Jeff Minton says no, he did not go, and it is two and two. Good defensive job there from Maddox Misi behind the dish. I mean, another one of these great ACU utility players back there behind the plate. Compass set, a check at Dixon. Swung on and missed. Smith down on strikes. First out here at the top of the first. And Compa, he brought the off speed there, seven, 70 miles per hour, and froze up someone who's had some strikeout problems early on into this series. And another early strikeout for Ian Compa, that's a big one. You got that double play set up now with that forced play at second if you get a ground ball. And one out for Burt Camper. Again, today's designated hitter. Started at catcher last night. He'll bat third and be the DH, the senior out of Allison Park, Pennsylvania. Two run home run last night in the first. His ninth of the year, he's now tied for the team lead with those nine home runs. He and Nate Bach both with nine apiece. Shift is on by the Wildcat defense. You can see it on the left side of the infield. First pitch of strike. All nine in the batting lineup today are right-handers here for Compton. About Burt Camper, 1.177 OPS this season. Great numbers from him, too. Behind in the count. Off speed pitch, swung on and missed. It's 0 2. I think you look at this Utah Valley lineup, Andy, and it's kind of that old adage in baseball you know, hey, how many runs can they score against us if we score double digits against <laughs> them? And hey, that works sometimes. They've done a good job of it. Fastball down Broadway for strike three. Camper was anticipating something else behind in the count. Compa grooves a fastball right down the middle. It's back-to-back -back case. And Ian Compa, what a pitch right there. Uh, you get to see it again, and let's let's watch right here. Not sitting on that. You saw it in his eyes, and Burke Camper has to take a seat on that one. Back-to-back -back case. Here's Callan Halverson, first baseman. Comp will start him upstairs. Halverson last night, 1-4-5 on the evening. You see out of Guthrie, Oklahoma. 337 the average for Halverson. Three home runs, 15 RBIs. Halverson, real familiar with this part of the country. Transferred from Cisco Junior College. Played a little bit of time there. Yeah. 
So found his way to Oklahoma and in junior college. So been a little bit all over the place in his college career, Andy. Here's one hit, left side of the infield. Payne has it, he'll go the long way. It pulls D'Alessio off the bag, everybody's safe. Long run, tough throw for Payne at shortstop. I think you have to give that an infield single. We'll see if the official score. Nonetheless, the inning continues with two on the base pass. Really hard hit here, Andy, by Halverson. And you got to look at that short hole in Zant Payne. That's the hardest throw you can make in baseball right there. You don't realize how much force you can get off your back foot when you have it planted on the ground. And jump and throw like that, that's something that doesn't happen too often. It has been given an infield single. The inning continues. Here's Nate Bach. Bach today's center fielder. 250 the average. One for four last night. Junior out of Boulder, Colorado. Made his way up to Utah. Another curveball. Compa. Feels like he's been upstairs with the off speed. That's upstairs, two balls and no strikes. Don't want to give a lot to hit to Bach here. He's got a lot of power in that bat. Nine home runs this season. That wind changes up. It could favor him too tonight in this ball game. There's a ball lifted. Shallow outfield. Garrett Williams, the second baseman, will give way to Zan Payne, the shortstop, who will make the catch. And that will retire the side. Lead off walk, a two out single, do no damage. Utah Valley strands two. Nothing for the Wolverines. Wildcats coming to bat, bottom of the first. There's a quiet top of the first for Utah Valley. The ACU bats will come up for the first time here in the bottom of the first inning. And they'll face the right-hander here, Ethan Folks, who will take the mound. The senior transfer, as you mentioned, out of Utah Tech. He'll make the start today for Utah Valley. 6.59 ERA for him this year, Andy. 30 walks, or 30 strikeouts to four walks, pardon me. 27 and a third innings for him this season. So the righty's had some good numbers. That ERA may not reflect it, but three and one, he gets a lot of run support from this team, which can bring a lot of comfort for a pitcher in a game, Andy. So you get a look at the Wildcat lineup today, very similar to what we saw last night. Aaron Staley, the start today in right field. He will bat seventh. The rest of the lineup looks very familiar for Rick McCarty here in game number two. First offering from Folks to Zant Payne. It's a chopper, second base side. Dickinson has it cleanly. One pitch, one out. There's efficiency of getting outs. And Zant Payne, a quick out here in the bottom of the first. Let's look at the Utah Valley defense. The same as last night, with the exception of Isaac Lovings, who gets to start at catcher today. Burt Camper, the designated hitter. One up, one down. Here's Miller Lattisall. Lattisall, the senior. He started his 26th game today out of 27. 352 the average. The long home run last night in the first inning. Lattisaw, D'Alessio, back-to-back solo home runs in the first. ACU had a 3-2 lead at the end of the first. We stayed that way until the seventh. So Utah Valley, four in the seventh, one in the eighth. 7-3 win. Stays outside. Two balls and one strike. Yeah, Lattisaw hasn't picked the bat off his shoulders yet in this at bat, Andy. And that's something, you know, a guy with a lot of power like Miller Lattisaw, you want to get aggressive in that bat. And this season, he's shown a lot of patience. Folks, a guy, you look at his stats from the season, again, making his seventh start of the year. He has been anywhere between four full innings and five full innings, either four, four and a third, four and two thirds, or five. So Coach Eddie Smith is looking to try to get somewhere in that range. Of course, if you can extend past five, that would be great. But the statistics show four to five innings out of Folks today. There's one fouled off. Full count here to Miller Lattisol. 
And Andy, that's a really big number right there in college. You can get four or five innings out of a guy consistently. Consistently, that is a workhorse mentality from a guy, someone that can go out there and will give you the innings you need. Payoff pitch. Chopper up the middle. Dickinson, a few steps to his right. Back-to-back -back plays, back-to-back -back outs. The middle infielder off to a nice start, two up, two down. Not much for Lattisaw to look at on that one, Andy, and had to do something there. It's one of those awkward situations in a full count, made contact with what he could, and just a little hop up the middle for the 4-3. And here's Gino D'Alessio, the first baseman. Again, hit a home run last night. His team leading seventh home run last night. He leads the whack with 30 RBIs. His only hit last night, that solo home run in the first. Tremendous impact here in this, this season for the Wildcats. Yeah, Gino's been nothing short of a blessing for Rick McCarty this season. He's really shown up. Someone that maybe some ACU fans probably looked at and said, who's this guy? Well, they know who he is now, Andy. <laughs> Fastball outside, 90 on the gun for Folks. D'Alessio, the grad transfer, Quincy University, hometown of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, down to Abilene, Texas. He'll put this one opposite way. It'll find its way to right field. Dickinson playing up the middle, anticipating a pull hit or something up the middle. D'Alessio goes the opposite way. He's got a two-out single. Well, and Gino D'Alessio, he's one of these guys that he can do really whatever you want him to at the plate. He can put the ball in play wherever he needs to, and right there, opposite field hit for Gino, and finds his way onto first here with two outs. Here's Garrett Williams, the second baseman, batting in the cleanup spot in the four, four hole. The only Wildcat with multiple hits last night. Williams two for four on the night, scored a run. Stole two bases as well. ACU three for three on the base pass. Stealing bases last night. So folks hold one. Off-speed pitch, high chop, left side, cut off by Broussard at third, throw across the diamond, and the side is retired. Two-out single, but that's it for the Wildcats. We've completed one at Crutcher Scott. We're scoreless. Utah Valley and ACU. Whack baseball on ESPN+. Plus. And we move to the top of the second. Good pitcher's duel to get things started. Ian Kampa, Ethan Folks, both scoreless baseball there through the first. Andy Penny alongside Coy Oslin. And, uh, Coy, we anticipated a good baseball this weekend. You had talked about uh, in the mid-major conversation going on this week in publications and online. This was a, a series that had some conversation. There was some traction going on between the Wildcats and the Wolverines. And, Andy, I mean, you look at these two offenses, you got to talk about them. I mean, what they've done this season, you talk about the double-digit games that Utah Valley's put up against big opponents. This is a really good one on a Friday night. Garrett Broussard to lead off the top of the second. It's Broussard, Jordan, and Lovings. 6-7-8 in the lineup. Comp an off-speed pitch. Broussard well out in front. Those yep. off-speeds have been working miracles tonight so far, Andy. Compa two strikeouts, back-to-back -back strikeouts in the first. This ball lifted right center field. Staley will get up underneath it, the right fielder. The wind held that one up. Again, it's pushing in from right field. And a right field pole to left field pole, and that helped. I had a chance, I think, off the bat to potentially skip the gap and get into the gap, but Staley able to get over and cut it off. One up, one down. Yeah, you just see the wind catch it, and – Hold it there. That can play some tricks on you if you're playing right field, especially in an overcast sky, Andy. And Aaron Staley fields it very cleanly. First pitch to Cole Jordan, the right fielder. Off speed pitch, four strike change up at 76. Jordan won for three last night, as you can see, had the walk. Makes his 23rd start of the year, 247 the average. Senior out of Newport Beach, California. 
behind in the count, 0-2. Of course, Utah Valley last year made the WAC championship game out in the WAC tournament, Mesa, Arizona. Sam Houston State, the better of Utah Valley in that championship game, had to beat them twice. The Bearcats did that. So Utah Valley and Coach Eddie Smith knocking on the door of an NCAA regional last year. There's a chopper state foul. ACU did the same thing two years ago, made the championship game of the WAC tournament, fell to New Mexico State. So two programs, two head coaches pushing in the right direction and knocking on the door of NCAA regional play. What Eddie Smith's done has been very impressive for Utah Valley. I really am impressed with what he's brought to a lineup. Thirty-four and twenty-four a year ago. ACU is thirty-five and twenty-four a year ago. The shift is on here for Jordan. He's behind in the count, zero and two, and he stays alive. Third consecutive foul. We'll do zero two again. Talk about, you know, what, what you can recruit with. You know, you talk about Rick McCarty. He can really use those central plains of the U.S. when it comes to going out and recruiting guys. Eddie Smith, he eats up that West Coast. I mean, you got guys from Utah, Arizona, California. Really good effort finding that West Coast. There's a ball roped into left field. Chance for extra bases. Lattisol will get it in in the left field corner in a hurry, but good speed by Cole Jordan. And he has a one-out double here in the second. Good at bat after falling behind 0-2. He fouls off three pitches and then gets in front of an off-speed pitch and lines it up over the head of Greer into left field. Yeah, third double this season for a guy slugging 468. He gets on base here, and I mean some wheels as he rounds first right there. No stopping him. He didn't even need the slide, Andy. So another runner in scoring position. Here's Isaac Loving, today's starting catcher. Makes his 22nd start. He's been in the lineup majority of the time. Did not play last night. Beaverton, Oregon, you talk about that West Coast. There's an Oregon look. Another right-handed batter, all nine today in the lineup on the right side. One ball and one strike. Big lead for Cole Jordan in second right now, Andy. Williams gives him just a small look. There's a ball lifted into left field. Lattisaw, a few steps to his left. In a step, he'll make the catch. And had Lovings played well out in left. Two, two outs now in the inning. It did not sound like Lovings got all of this one off the bat, Andy. And Obviously, that win's not going to help anything, and Miller Lattisaw barely having to even take a step to get <laughs> to that one. Two outs. Here's Matthew Schwartz, the shortstop, the nine-hole spot. Green Acres, Wisconsin. I hear that's the place to be. One for three last night. It's a farm living the life for you, Andy. <laughs> Comp has done a nice job of getting ahead in the count. He starts off. Swartz with a strike. And the 0-1, it's upstairs, one ball and one strike. You see the overcast skies, the artificial lights are already on. Last night, the sun played a pretty big factor on the left side of the infield, not today in these overcast skies. Again, the lights are already on here at Crutcher Scott. One ball, one strike to Swartz. Ball hit left side, Greer at third. He's got it cleanly. Strong throw across, and the side is retired. Cole Jordan, a one-out double. He's stranded out at second. Inning and a half complete. We're still scoreless here in Abilene.
it back to the bottom of the second. We are still scoreless. Utah Valley and AC. The Wildcats will send up five, six, and seven. Van Atten, Misi, and Staley here at the ballpark. Andy Penny alongside Coy Austin. Glad you're with us for WAC Baseball on this good Friday in Abilene on ESPN. It's kind of a party here of sorts in Abilene for Utah Valley. The Utah Valley softball team is also in town. Split two today with uh, ACU. ACU the better 10-2 to two in the first. Utah Valley wins 5-4 in the second. But there's the Utah Valley softball team joining us here at Crutcher Scott today. Think they travel together? I'm going to guess not. What do you think? I think that's dependent up to the schools. <laughs> okay. Would certainly help. I'll tell you, the travel in the WAC is something special. And we were talking about that beforehand. Yeah. You, know, you got your little Utah pod and your Texas pod, but when they got to cross over, that gets real tough on schools. DJ Van Atten, today's designated hitter to lead it off. Van Atten won for four last night. The Wildcats had eight hits last night, but just could not string together an inning to produce runs with the exception of the first. Scored all three runs in the first, then eight consecutive zeros put up by Utah Valley pitching. And that did have the single, one for four last night. Get this down third baseline, but foul, and it's 0-2. Braden Bravere, seven innings of relief baseball, no runs, five hits. After Chase Hennessy, the start just went two-thirds of an inning. But that was the game plan. That's been Eddie Smith's game plan all season long with Chase Hennessy. He made his national leading 11th start last night, but no start has gone more than an inning. Rumor has it that Hennessy might start again tomorrow, game three of the series. He's done that before, two starts versus Stephen F. Austin two weeks ago. Manhattan will hit this opposite way. It's fielded cleanly Halverson at first. He'll run over and step on the back. Four ground ball outs thus far on the mound for Ethan Folks. Yeah, and he got DJ Van Atten there. And, and Van Atten's one of these guys. He's the great slugger for ACU, the type of guy you look at, and, you know, that guy's got a lot of power. Well, he hasn't hit a lot of home runs this season, Andy, but anything he hits seems to have a lot of speed off of it. And right there, a good fielding job by Halverson over at first. Bases empty, one out for Maddox Misi. Folks will start him off with a fastball, but outside. Misi 0 for 3 last night. The average down to 218. Maddox, the pure backstop back there at catcher for this Wildcat pitching staff. Good curveball for a strike. And Maddox, he's another one of these guys I've already mentioned. He can play really wherever Rick McCarty likes him to. And Historically, McCarty's liked his catchers to be able to play a little bit of everything. He'll hit this one on the ground. Dickinson has been busy over at second base. Another clean field and another ground out. Quickly two up, two down. Got a very efficient inning, inning for folks so far, Andy. As take a look at this one right here. Like you said, a lot of work for Dixon at second, but that hasn't been a problem at all. Already his third put out in the first two innings. Here's Aaron Staley, today's starting right fielder. He'll put this one on the ground. Guess who it is? Dickinson. Throw over to first. In time. Quick inning for Ethan Folks. The seven pitches in the inning, and the side is retired. We've played two at Crutcher Scott and Abilene. We're still scoreless. Utah Valley and ACU. And back to the ballpark. No scores. We go to the top of the third inning. No runs, two hits. No errors for Utah Valley. No runs on just one hit thus far for ACU. And no errors as well. Ian Kampa has been efficient in his two innings of work. He gave up a leadoff walk in the first, a single in the first, and a double in the second. But has stranded three runners already. One time through the lineup, we'll see the top of the lineup here for the Wolverines as Daniel Dickinson will lead it off. Game two of this three-game series today. Dickinson walked his first time, was stranded at second base. 
Still looks for his first hit of the weekend. He's been on the base pass twice. Has not hit. Check swing, first pitch. Long run, Williams at second. Got it. Flip. Nicely done. Garrett Williams gets his counterpart at second base, Daniel Dickinson. Dickinson's been busy defensively. He wants to make sure Williams stays busy there too. Nice play by Garrett, one up, one down. Yeah, Garrett Williams, he's one of these guys that has played a little bit of everything for ACU. He's really found his home at second and put that in the scorebook as a 4-3, Andy. But, man, what a tough play there for Garrett Williams. Seven outs deep. Ian Compa just 36 pitches. First pitch here, giving Jaden Smith it is a strike. Smith, one of two strikeout victims thus far today. Struck out swinging in the first. His fourth strikeout of the weekend. In the big grand slam last night in the seventh to give the Wolverines the lead at 6-3. A full count versus Cade McGar. And McGar challenged with a fastball, and Smith won the battle, took it over the left field wall over the outstretched glove of Miller Lattisaw. Right on cue, here's the ball hit to Lattisaw, and it's a one-out single. Smith has his first hit of the weekend. Ball gets away. Smith trying to stretch it to a double, and he's thrown out at second. Wildcats, a nice job to get it back in. Smith trying to catch the defense, not paying attention. The Wildcats were, and Smith is out at second base. Now let's take a peek at this here, Andy. Uh, of course, the ball gets away, but some good awareness kind of helped out there. You try to stretch one, and it can't happen. I, I'm telling you right there, good awareness from ACU on that. It will go as a single, but a big second out. The bases are now empty. Burt Camper at the plate. I didn't see it. I actually looked down. Yeah. I don't know if Lattisaw bobbled it just for a second or something, but you saw the relay came into Zant Payne, the cutoff man, an easy throw to Williams and an easy tag. Not even really close there at second base. May have been one of those calls right there, Andy, that you just make on a whim in a ball game. Early on in this inning, though, you've gotten to see the physical ability of ACU's defense, but also the, the mental, that awareness that they have. Something Rick McCarty takes a lot of pride in is having good defense and having those good fundamentals. Here's the 1-1. One, one. That's well inside. And hit by a pitch, Camper on the base pass. That makes that second out that much more important. As Camper is hit, could be first and second, just one out. Instead, it's just first and two outs. And yeah, you got to take those. That's difficult to do, but Burt Camper takes it right on the shoulder and takes his base. And Ian Campa has didn't really have the pitch there. You see it, it comes out of the hand, not properly. Inning continues. Callan Halverson, single in the first. In the Wildcats, this is their fourth conference series. Utah Valley, just their third conference series. They played out of conference last weekend. Three-game sweep over Bushnell, part of the six-game winning streak for the Wolverines. So here's one on the corner, four strike, one ball and one strike. ACU again has dropped the opening game of all four series, only to come back and win games two and games three of the first three series. They'll try to do that again this weekend. Curveball on the inside, catches the zone. It's one ball, two strikes. But a couple of those games, Andy, in those series where they've come back and won back-to-back, -back, they've started early. They haven't done that here in this one so far. Here's a one-two. We'll do it again. Offense has been at a premium this weekend for ACU. With the two scoreless innings today, Utah Valley pitching has gone ten innings in a row, putting up zeros. Kampa trying to put up his third consecutive zero on the scoreboard. One ball, two strikes to Halverson. Waste pitch, two balls and two strikes. Kampa trying to look off speed. It's been a good strikeout pitch for him in this ball game. Camper not a threat to run over at first. 
He is two for two on the year. Speaking of two, two, it's fouled off. We'll do it again. Decent pitch mix here from Campa in this at bat. Doesn't want to have to do too much for his fielders. Garrett Williams at second base. You can see plays up the middle, a few steps to the right of the second base bag, anticipating something back up the middle or a pull swing. Here's the 2-2, and we'll do it again. Wolverine bats have done a nice job protecting the plate with two strikes. You look at that inning where Utah Valley came back yesterday, that grand slam, long at bat, Sandy, breaking down AC's bullpen. See if Campo's got the stuff. Third time, 2-2 two -two pitch. Ground ball, left side. Greer has it. He'll make the long throw across. D'Alessio can't pick it. It gets away. He'll run it down. Wide throw of the bag. D'Alessio... Makes a dive to try to keep it in front, and he can't. And the inning will continue. An E5 on the play. Camper to third. Halverson at second, all with two outs. Yeah, and Halverson right there. That's why you run as hard as you can on anything, Andy. Finds his way to second, and if you're eyeing Camper, you got to look at the bright side of this. At least it was someone like Camper who was on first, who isn't really known for his yep. running ability. That could have been trouble early on. Time called here. Maddox Misi will go out and visit with Compa. This might be a chance. And now Rick McCarty will also come out. Nothing stirring in the bullpen. It's early. Compa's been in control. I think this might, might be more of a conversation with the infield. Situational here. And just let's recollect and let's get this third out of the top of the third. And, Andy, I think this worked a lot yesterday. Going to the mound and just having a conversation with your pitcher, talking him down. We saw... Happened a couple of times with McCarty yesterday and trying to find a way in here. That error, the first today, the second of the series. You see made one last night. Fielding percentage of 975. Their 23rd error. There, Greer, the wide throw to first. Their 23rd error of the year. But this is where Rick McCarty's been really good as the manager of ACU in his sixth season. Just, hey, let's calm down. Let's take care of the businesses in front of us. Let's get out of the inning. Camper at third, Halverson at second, two outs. Nate Bach, the center fielder, 0 for 1. Popped up shallow outfield, but Payne, the shortstop, made the catch. Bach is one for five in the series. Had a hit last night. Compa works out of the stretch. Good pitch to start the at bat in the two and one. Again, Bach this season, 333 with runners in scoring positions. Obviously a small sample size, but 258 batting average when there's two outs in an inning. So the numbers don't lie, Andy. This should be a big at bat. The shift is on. Williams. Second baseman left of the bag. That's quickly 0-2. Utah Valley, their damage last night with two outs. They've done this with two outs. It's Dickinson grounded out. Smith a single, but he tried to stretch it to a double and was thrown out at second. Camper hit by a pitch. Halverson reaches on the air. They're at second and third. Here's the 0-2. Check swing. Did he go? Yes, he did. Bach is down on strikes. Compa gets out of the inning. Two more stranded for Utah Valley. They've stranded five over the first three. We stay scoreless here at Crutcher Scott. ACU coming to bat, bottom of the third. Ian, Ian Compa does a job. Top of the third, he gets the check swing of Nate Bach and with two on, two out. Ian Compa gets his third strikeout of the afternoon. And that was a big strikeout, Andy. A lot of people were holding their breath. You probably could have broke that tension with anything you wanted to, but of course that third strike in the ground and 
Ein Kampf, a good job getting out of a jam right there. So he stays scoreless, bottom of the third. Ethan Folks has been impressive in his two innings of work, just giving up a two-out single in the first. 23 pitches through two innings for Ethan Folks. You'll see eight, nine, and one. Greer, Borjo, and top of the lineup in pain. And Benjamin Greer, who started in right field last night, today's starting third baseman. Greer, the senior out of Pearland, Texas, down in the Houston area, transferred from San Jacinto, San Jacinto Junior College. 269 the average as Greer makes his eighth start of the year. Seven hits and 26 at bats. Four RBIs on the year. Talking about earning your way into a lineup, Benjamin Greer has really done that this season, Andy. I mean, someone that Rick McCarty was really excited about getting last year. Obviously, that lineup, not a lot of room for him, but worked his way into this one and playing right field, third base, anywhere Rick needs him to. So, good season from him here so far, getting back-to-back -back starts. Found his, himself on the base pass twice last night, a single and a walk. Stole a base, one of three stolen bases for ACU. 2-2 Two -two count here to lead off the bottom of the third. Folks into the wind, the 2-2, two -two. off speed, got him, backdoor curve. First strikeout tonight for Ethan Folks. He's retired five in a row, dating back to the first inning. Quickly one down here in the third, and it'll bring up Reese Borjo, the center fielder, the hometown product out of here in Abilene. Borjo makes his 15th start of the year. Check swing on a curveball. Appeal down to third. Yes, he did go. Borjo a double last night. Leads the whack in triples right now. Behind in the count, 0 and 2. Folks, the wind, the 0 2. Fastball for strike three. 90 on the radar gun. It's back to back K's to start the bottom of the third for Ethan Folks. It's a little bit of everything there from Ethan Folks in that at bat and freezes Reese Borjo right there. And Andy, you talk about the pitch mix in that last at bat. Slow working its way up, and you close it with the fastball looking. Good strike out there, back-to-back -back looking. Quickly two outs. Folks working quick. He'll start off Payne with a strike as well. Payne grounded out his first time. Still looks for his first hit of the weekend. 0 for 4 last night. The average at 289 to start the day. He's got five doubles, a home run. It's 0-2. Folks looks to strike out the side. Look at Folks' pace, Andy. There's a lot of guys. That's how they pitch. They got to have that good pace. There's the 1-2. Hit opposite way, just foul. Third base side. We'll do 1-2 again. You know, you stay in a nice rhythm when there's no base runners. You yeah. don't have to worry about activity on the base pass. Wildcats with just one base runner thus far. Folks has been in control. He's determined the pace, the rhythm. Ahead in the count here, one, two. Skips in, gets away from Lovings. Two balls and two strikes. The 2-2, two -two. that's up, three balls and two strikes. This pain has battled back to a full count. Miller Lattisall waits on deck if the inning continues. Isaac Loving's getting a little bit of encouragement to his pitcher right here with the full count. Like to get out of this inning right here. Payoff pitch, that's up for ball four. Put an asterisk by that. I don't know if it'll turn into anything here in the third inning, but if nothing else, a base runner for the Wildcats. That's a good plate appearance by Payne, who was down 0-2 in the count. And comes back to draw the first walk given up by folks tonight. 
And bring up Miller Lattisol for one. It's eight pitches in that last at bat, Andy, right there, and a good take by Zant Payne. Eight pitches, that's one more than was thrown in the entirety of the bottom <laughs> of the second inning, Andy. So Lattisol, the first offering. It's in for strike, 84 on the gun. That's a guy, Miller Lattisol, he's been around this program for a long, long time. One of the staples for Rick McCarty in his sixth year. Lattisol has been here the majority of that. Been in this lineup majority of that time. Rick McCarty, he's really loyal to a lot of his players. And, I mean, Miller Lattice saw the guys he's seen come through. He's seen guys go to the next level. He's seen some guys go to other places, bigger yeah. schools. And Miller stayed here and, and has really improved his game. Looks great this season. Hulk's ahead 0-2. The kick. Runner on the move. It's a hit and run. It's beautifully executed. It's a single into center field. Payne goes corner to corner. Runners at first and third with two outs. Miller Lattisol drives one right back up the middle. It's a clutch piece of hitting there, and there's a lot of speed off that ball, Andy. You can see it curving up the middle of the infield off the bat, and now you got Gino D'Alessio coming into bat here, and someone that's been nothing but electric here in WAC baseball this season. So runners on the corners for him. D'Alessio had the lone hit for the Wildcats prior to that Lattisol single. Folks, first time he's had some activity on the base pass. Start off D'Alessio with a strike. Gino, the team leader in batting average at 364. Leader in hits with 36. Lattisaw on the move. Throw down to second. Not in time. Two in scoring position. Lattisaw the stolen base. ACU remains perfect. Swiping bags this weekend at four for four. Yeah, and right now Ethan Folks having to work out of something he hasn't seen all day today. Two on, both in scoring position now with two outs. And Telesio is someone who, with runners in the scoring position, 353 this year for him. 1-1 one, one pitch. Fouled back. Challenged with a fastball. Telesio fouls it straight back. One ball, two strikes. A lot of aggression in that swing, Andy. Catch your breath if yep. you're Gino here. Kind of find your rhythm. Infield plays deep for a hard ground ball. One ball, two strikes. Skips away to the backstop. Payne will come in and score. The Wildcats score the first run in the afternoon. Just a ball that gets away from Folks. And ACU breaks our scoreless tie. And Andy, right there, you, you see that hit and run come into factor. The small ball has been a big part of what uh, Rick McCarty and his team have done since the beginning. And right here, you see the hit and run has happened. and. Zant Payne's on third, and he's going to come straight home after that walk. So a big walk for ACU gets a run here early on in this ballgame. And now this one driven into center field. We'll find green turf. It's an RBI single for Gino D'Alessio, and the two-out rally continues. Wildcats, a 2-0 lead here in the bottom of the third. And again, to your point, Coy, go back to the walk by Payne. Down 0-2 in the count with two outs. Battles back, gets the walk, the hit and run by Lattisaw, the wild pitch. A stolen base in there as well. Now an RBI single from D'Alessio. And a visit from Eddie Smith, the Utah Valley head coach, who wants to come out and talk to folks. But again, all of that starts with great plate appearance by Zant Payne. Put some pressure on the shoulders of folks for the first time today, and before you know it, it's two to nothing. Yeah, and you, you can talk about that wild pitch all you want, Andy, but, I mean, the small ball has worked for ACU all year long, and Gino D'Alessio doing what he's done all season long. ACU is kind of scripted right here almost, it feels, where they come out and do this about once a game. You want to keep moving here if you're ACU. The Lattisol hit stretches his hitting streak to five. That's currently the longest on the team for the Wildcats, five-game hitting streak. He's reached base now in 26 in a row. D'Alessio's reached base in 22 in a row. 
Lattisaw just scored. D'Alessio now at first. Garrett Williams at the dish. 0 for 1 and ground out. Well, if nothing else, it just maybe for ACU just it breaks a string of 10 consecutive scoreless innings at the plate. Just to get a few on the board here in the third. Here's an off-speed pitch driven into center. It will fall in front of Bach in center field. Gary Williams has a single. Third consecutive batter here is Lattisaw, D'Alessio, and now Williams. Three singles here in the inning. Yeah, right here. This is this is what Garrett Williams does. Singles up the middle all day, and if you can do that, you get on base. He is a very big run scorer in the whack. He's up atop that scoreboard in the top five, and someone who's done that all season. And, and right now, you've got another two on for DJ Van Atten. Designated hitter, 0 for 1 today. Grounded out to first. Holt starts him off with an off-speed pitch. Oaks set and the 0-1. This one hit down the third baseline and fair into the corner. This will be extra bases and more RBIs. D'Alessio is in. Williams rounding third. He'll try to follow up and score, and he will. It's a two-run double for DJ Van Atten. The Wildcats, a crooked number here in the third. They lead four to nothing. DJ Van Atten, this is what he does right here. I talked about it back when his first hit bat came up all the way back in the second inning, and DJ gets up there and gets hits. He hits them hard, and he can use those lines as much as he wants to. And that swing, Andy, is smooth as honey, and he gets on second base with two RBIs. The Wolverine defense was playing for a pull hit. Broussard at third was close to the line, but Van Atten smoked it past him into that left field corner. Two RBIs for Van Atten, RBIs number 15 and 16 on the year. Maddox Meese will try to keep the hit train going. Four consecutive hits now for the Wildcats. Meese's 0 for 1, a ground out. Hit it back up the middle into center field. Van Atten will try to score. The throw from Bach is not in time. Bang, bang, play at the plate. Van Atten a nice slide. Turns into an RBI single for Maddox Meese and a 5-0 Wildcat lead. Well, I bet the, the weight of the world is off the shoulders of this ACU offense, and I bet it feels really good for Maddox Misi. You talked about those numbers have dipped down to a 215 batting average, but this man right here, he is a clutch hitter for ACU. As you see, DJ Van Atten, he puts the wheels on and finds his way around. It's a five-run inning for ACU, and we've seen this in this series already, Andy. Last, last night, you saw that four-run inning with two outs. Here we are, two outs, five runs for the Wildcats. Five consecutive hits. ACU has batted around. Aaron Staley, the ninth batter of the inning. Shows bunt, pulls it back, takes a ball. There's a righty throwing in the Utah Valley bullpen right now, Andy. It's a fresh bullpen with what Bravere was able to do last night. Should be plenty of arms available here for the Wolverines. Off speed to Staley, stays up, two balls and no strikes. Aaron Staley, another really patient bat in this ACU lineup for Rick McCarty. Someone that's going to go up there and take his pitches, but don't give him a beach ball. He'll hit it. Folks, a long set, and the 2-0 swung on, fouled at the plate. After just 27 pitches through the first two innings, Folks has thrown 27 here in the third. Started the inning with back-to-back -back strikeouts. All the damage has been done with two outs. There's the 2-1. Ground ball left side and through into left field. Another base hit. Station to station, Meese to second. Staley will stop at first. Broussard, the third baseman, was playing well in. He was playing three, four steps on the infield grass, anticipating a potential bunt third baseline. Staley slaps it opposite way and passed to pulled in Bruce Hard. Six consecutive hits now for the Wildcats. 
And Andy, you said station to station. Something that's been big about this rally here for ACU has been they've been conservative when they need to on the base pass, but they've been very liberal with their running when they need to. They played their game very well, and when I say play their game, it is their game, Andy. Isaac Lovings will make his way out, the catcher out to the mound. This is a stall tactic, trying to get the bullpen going. And now here comes Eddie Smith. Believe we'll have a call to the bullpen. We'll check. But Ethan Folks just could not get that third out here in this bottom of the third. And there is the call to the bullpen. We'll tell you about the new Utah Valley pitcher, Wildcats, with five runs in the inning. Utah Valley going to the pin. ACU a 5-0 lead, bottom of the third. Utah Valley called to the bullpen after seven consecutive Wildcats reached six on base hits. Mitch Miller will come in and try to stop the damage. He'll take over with runners on the base pass, two outs, but five runs in the inning. Miller, the right-hander, will try to stop the damage. Yeah, right-hander from Brookfield, Wisconsin, Winona State and Parkland Junior College transfer. 2.12 ERA and 17 innings pitched this year. Super effective out of this bullpen. You talk about that 14 strikeouts to five walks, something you see a lot from this Utah Valley bullpen. And trying to utilize the pieces they've got. And you got this veteran pitcher, a very experienced guy coming onto the mound here. And it must have been a tight situation. At one point, you were one strike away from getting out of this inning, Andy. Now the Wildcats, Zant Payne with two outs at an 0-2 count, fought back to walk. Since then, it's been a Lattisaw single, a D'Alessio RBI single, a Williams single, a Van Atten two-run double, a Meese RBI single, and a Staley single. Meese's at second, Staley's at first, five runs in the inning. And ACU is batted around. Miller will face Benjamin Greer, his first batter. First pitch, fastball, 92 on the gun here at the stadium. Misses for a ball, though, 1-0. Now a curveball for a strike. Greer started this inning with one of those two strikeouts by Folks. His last outing, Miller's last outing, last Friday versus Bushnell. Five innings of work, three runs, six hits. Here's the 0-2, hit into center field, tailing and will fall. Meese rounds third, he will score. Corner to corner goes Staley. It's an RBI single for Greer as well. It's six to nothing Wildcats here in the third. Yeah, Benjamin Greer, I talked about this a lot here at the top of this inning. He's someone that has earned his place in the roster, and this is exactly why. He comes up big here, and you could say wind assist if you want to, but he got every ounce of it. You could see it in his face and runs his heart out over to first. You get a, another run right here, and another run on the board is a big one in this ballgame. Greer's first hit today, second of the series. There's Reese Borjo. Runners on the corner, Staley at third, Greer at first. Miller misses on the inside. It's been a long time since I've seen eight consecutive reach. Seven courtesy of hits. Fastball for strike, one ball, one strike. Don't go away. We've seen Utah Valley's offense put up some runs. Of course, they lead the conference with seven and a half runs a game. So, still plenty of baseball to go this afternoon. There's one hit right side and into right field. It's eight consecutive hits for the Wildcats. Corner to corner goes Greer. Staley touches home plate. Reese Borjo, an RBI single. It's seven to nothing, Wildcats. Yeah, that's a big hit right there, Andy. You can talk about it all day, but when you're getting hits like this, this consistently, and against a guy who is very impressive on the mound, this is a big deal. Mitch Miller is someone that should not be taken lightly, and you're getting hits against him. You've got some runs on the board, and now you've got a couple that are going to go to his accreditation on the, on the base pass, Andy. 
Second time through the lineup, all nine Wildcats reach base. Eight with hits. Zant Payne, the only one that did not, but he started this two-out rally with a walk. As runners on the corners. In the first two Wildcats of the inning, struck out. Payne was down in the count 0-2, fought back for a walk, and started the two-out rally. He'll lift this one opposite way. Long run for Smith. Foul territory, can't get there. That ball just continued to tail. Of course, the wind is pushing that direction, too. A lot of foul territory at this ballpark, Andy. Of course, you see the graph there on the screen blowing in at 18 miles per hour towards third base. And you can talk about how that wind's going to blow. That hit like that, Andy, that's a fly out any day almost in this ballpark. But that wind really pushed it foul. And like you said, the top of this game, that wind's not going anywhere through this game. Here's the 1-1 one -one on the shoe tops. Check swing, did he go? No, he did not. Two balls and one strike. Miller comes set. The 2-1. Fastball for a strike. We can close the line on Ethan Folks now. Two and two-thirds innings of work. 57 pitches. Seven runs, all earned on seven hits. They all came in this third inning. Two strikeouts also came in this third inning. Here's a 2-2. Inside, full count. Chance for Borjo at first to get the wheels turning. Full count, two outs. Talk about that series against Bushnell. Uh, Mitch Miller, five innings pitch for him, three earned runs on six hits. Someone that can start a game, but coming in this situation, you got runners on the corners now, Andy. And a full count. Borjo on the move, payoff pitch. Upstairs for ball four. It started with a pain walk. It continues with a pain walk. Bases are loaded for Miller Lattisol. Yeah, and this full house here almost at Crutcher Scott, packed on that home side, Andy. And here they are. They're getting really rowdy for this bases loaded rally and getting the heart of that order. Here's Miller Lattisol, who, if anyone can get the job, this is the type of guy you'd want him. Well, if you're Eddie Smith, you just have to be gritting your teeth, frustrated. Lattisol will take a strike. I don't know if I've seen 10 in a row reach in a long time. Lattice saw a single, a stolen base, and a run scored earlier this inning. First time to see Miller. Another fastball into a 2 With a guy like Miller Lattice saw, I talked about how he slowed his approach to the plate, Andy, and right now, that 0-2 count, this is exactly where you want someone like him. It's the 0-2. Swung on, foul tipped. Lovings cannot hold on to it. We'll do 0-2 again. It's so the last second desperation swing right there to try to foul one off. One strike away from getting out of this inning once again, Andy. With Greer at third, Borjo at second, Payne at first. Here's the 0-2. Hits Lattice on the shoe. Hit by pitch will keep the inning will keep the inning going. It's eight to nothing, Wildcats. Well, you take them as you can get them, Andy, and right there, that's one of those situations. Takes it as easy as can, and another problem here with Gino D'Alessio stepping in. So Borjo at third, Payne now at second, Lattice saw at first. D'Alessio, two for two today, two singles, an RBI single here in this inning. Miller starts him off with off speed for a strike. All with two outs. This all started with two outs. And, and several opportunities, Andy, with two strikes. Throw back to second. Borjo back in.
I don't I don't try to reflect a lot of opinion into a broadcast yep. anyway. I don't like that throw right there, especially with the base is loaded, the wind blowing like it is. It's the 0-1. Good pitch there by Miller, and it's 0-2. Miller stopped the bleeding here for the Wolverines. He's ahead in the count. Here's the 0-2. Curveball in for strike three. The inning comes to an end, but the Wildcats have done the damage. Eight runs in the inning. Eight runs on eight hits. We've played three. The Wildcats now the 8-0 lead here in Abilene. Well, welcome back to the ball game. I am Compa. Last time he was on the mound, it was a scoreless tie, and he'll take over the time of the fourth. Eight nothing lead as ACU scores eight runs on eight hits in the inning. Fourteen Wildcats go to the plate there in the bottom of the third. So Compa back to the mound with a little bit better feeling there in an eight nothing lead. One of those innings I don't think you're going to see very often. No, you are not, Andy. That was a tough <laughs> inning right there, and. Utah Valley, they've, they've given up a couple runs like this in a ball game before, so if anyone can come back, this, this offense can do it. We move to the middle innings, top of the fourth to take you through the middle innings. I'll hand it off to Coy Austin. Coy, it's all yours. Yeah, Andy, after that inning, I feel like I give you a little bit of a break here. <laughs> Catch my breath, huh? I felt like you were selling calves. <laughs> the auctioneer felt like. The first pitch right there, down the middle for strike one. Broussard in this ball game, 0 for 1. Flew out to right field back in the second inning. Feels like that was a decade ago. He watches the 0-1. Gets under it and drives that one out into left field. It is foul. Wind found that one. Off the bat, Andy, that looked like it was going to be trouble. Now got out in front of an off-speed pitch. Just pulled it a little too far. Compa through three innings, no runs, three hits, just 51 pitches. So Plenty of gas left in the tank. You just wonder, after sitting out for however long that half inning was, 25, 30 minutes, how long will Rick McCarty push him? Good pitch up the middle from Kampa, high for a ball. Through a third of this game, Andy, Utah Valley, no runs on three hits, five left on base. ACU, eight runs on nine hits, just leaving four guys on base. Try the one-two. Up the middle, could be playable. Snagged by Williams, the throw to first at D'Alessio. He got him. Oh, my, what a play deep in the hole. Garrett Williams finds its way over to first base and Gino D'Alessio for a long first out here in the fourth inning. What a play. You'll see it. Bang, bang play over here. As Broussard trying to get there. Great stretch. D'Alessio, the umpire over at first. Jet Mitten is all over it. Broussard, not a fan of it. Eddie Smith, the head coach, not a fan of it. It's, he's getting his few words into Minton. But what a play by Williams. He was the left side of the second base bag, the second baseman, and deep, last step of the infield dirt. Picks it, turns the hips, makes an accurate throw. D'Alessio, a great stretch. Great first out here the fourth. Eddie Smith still letting his feelings be known from the dugout. We're going to get back underway here. Be Cole Jordan doubled back in the second. Big roper on that hit. Pitch from Kampa is high. I was about to say a third of the way through this one into Utah Valley, though. Five left on base just compared to ACU's four. That's a, that's a tough bargain so far in an eight-run ball game. 1-0 called a strike and gets away from Misi. Well, I tell you, that play and that bang-bang out at first base, that's just almost salt in a wound after an eight-run bottom of the third. Wolverines want to get the bats up. Broussard made good contact, but Williams just that much better of a play. 1-1 one, one outside. Big shout-out to Jet Mitten, though, the first base umpire there letting 
Coach Smith have his feelings out, say a couple words about it. 2-2. Two -two. Did he go? No. Don't go anywhere on this Wolverine offense. Of course, lead the whack seven and a half runs a game. Put up a nine run inning versus BYU in their midweek earlier this week, Monday night. Put up nine runs. A big strike right there will be a 3-2 count. Hey, you talk about that Bushnell series, Andy. That second game, 19 to 11 final score. One before that was not much prettier, 11 to nine. So a very doable job for Utah Valley. Full count pitch from Kampa. Inside, it's going to be a walk, and Broussard's on for a second time in this ball game. Or, pardon me, Jordan. Well, they put up double-digit runs versus Stephen F. Austin two weekends ago. Double-digit runs, as you mentioned, last weekend. 15 runs versus BYU on Monday. So there's plenty of offense in the, in the bats. Isaac Lovings, the catcher, going to step in here now. Flew out to right field back in the second inning. The second out of that inning, Jordan got on also. So following the play-by-play -play so far in this inning from that past one. First pitch, low and away for ball one. Williams playing close over to second, but other than that, the defense looking pretty normal as that one is roped foul. And it'll be a 1-1 count. 69 miles per hour on that pitch, Andy. Very slow out of the hand. Staying with the off speed. Of course, Loving's a power hitter. Compa staying with the off speed stuff. It's under that one. It drives it to left field. Miller Lattice saw watching that one. It is a fair ball. Rounding second is Jordan. He's going to come home. And the Wolverines have a run on the board here. They respond to ACU's eight-run inning and get a run of their own on the board. And that's big, Andy. Yeah, no doubt. And a good job by Lovings to turn on that one, hit it down the left field line into the corner. Boy, we're seeing that one well. Jordan waved around at third base, an eight-run game. The Wildcats just want to make sure they get the ball back in the infield. That's exactly what Utah Valley needed. Again, there's there's plenty of power in these bats. And Lovings gets it rolling with the RBI double. So with Lovings on second, that's going to bring up Matthew Schwarz. Short stop for this ball club. Found himself in a 5-3 to end the second inning last time up. So 0 for 1 so far for the product out of Washington. 8-1 ball game, runner on second here, top of the fourth inning. Looked bunt, did not go. It'll be a strike either way for Kampa. It's always a good thing, Andy, when you can get that first run on the board and kind of break through that shell. 0-1, fouled straight back. And, Coy, how big is that first out now? In the, in the inning. Williams Absolutely. makes the great play behind the second base bag. If that play is bang, bang the other way, it's an 8-2 ball game with nobody out. This player stretching in AC's bullpen right now. That won't be a problem. This Kampa's pitch is chopped over, and it goes over the glove of Greer and out into left field, and Lattisaw calmly feels it and bounces it back into the shortstop. Zant Payne, but one that bounces straight over the glove of Benjamin Greer at third. And now there's runners on the corner, Andy. It'll be interesting to see how that one is scored. But now runners on the corner. Greer already in an error over there at third base today. Crazy hop, they've given it a single. So the single for Schwarz, that's his first hit of the game. We head back to the order, and Daniel Dixon, the standout slugger for this team. Dickinson watches the first pitch for ball one. 
walked back in the first inning, grounded out in the third. Opportunity here for him. Throw over to first. There will be nothing there, and that's Schwarz at first again. And again, Coy, Utah Valley leads the conference in stolen bases, have not attempted a stolen base yet this weekend. The pitch, Dickinson watches one up top for strike. Batting 345 with runners in scoring position this season. That number absolutely stands out, 110 at-bats for this right-handed batter for the Wolverines. The 1-1, way inside, did not fret up at the hands. Andy, I've noticed Coppa really slows his pace when yeah. he's got some runners on. He's been able to strand five through the first three. Pitch fouled off. It'll be a 2-2 count. I'm seeing sun pop out for the first time in Abilene today. As it's, <laughs> it's time to set, I guess it's below the clouds. We've had overcast skies all day, but a little sun peeking through here in the late hours of the afternoon. Throw over to first, there will be nothing again. Campo looking in. Deals from the stretch. That one is fouled back. And we'll try the 2-2 again. Well, I just feel, I know we're just in the top of the fourth here, Coy, but I just feel like this portion of the game could be really critical as this one plays out. Can Utah Valley chip away more than just one run here in this top of the fourth? Another 2-2 pitch. He struck him out swinging. That one down low and away, and a big strikeout for Ian Kampa. Fastball at 89 on the gun. Kampa's really pounded the zone with fastballs. That one, though, on the outside edge. Dickinson sees fastball out of the hand, but it's out of the hitter's zone. He just can't get barrel on it at all. It's a good piece of pitching there by Kampa. He gets his third strikeout of the afternoon. We see stepping out of the box as we see Jaden Smith stepping in. A Gilbert, Arizona product. One for two so far in this ball game. Strikeout for him. And a single in the last inning. One of those runners left on base for the Wolverines. And again, to go back to that last point, Coy, you know, 8-1 is a different game than 8-2, 8-3, because ACU would then feel the pressure of, okay, maybe eight's not enough. Or yeah. maybe eight one, you're like, okay, it's still eight one. You know, not to say eight's enough, but just the mindset of eight one versus eight two, eight three, eight four. You know how some games feel like a pitcher's duel. Some games feel like, yeah. you know, uh, we, we can score 15 and that might not be enough. So like a night like last night, Jaden Smith hits the grand slam and it just felt like, well, the ball game's over, even though it was 6-3 in the seventh. It felt like, well, that's it. Because yeah. it was such a pitcher's duel last night. The one big swing by Smith that changed the, the script of the game felt like it ended the game, too. Yeah, and Andy, it was an inning a lot like this one so far where, yeah, you got the two outs, but you've been letting some guys on. That one way outside. They're going to see if he went. He did not. John Perez peels over to Jet Mitten over at first base. Kampa really trying to work that curveball to stay out of the zone, but see if Wolverine batters will chase. Smith stays off of that one. Both the starters today, Andy, really good curveball action yeah. for both of them. Kampa's yeah. pitch up the middle for a strike, 69 miles per hour once <laughs> again. That slow stuff will eat you up. Ein Kampa, one strike away from getting out of the inning. Boy, Smith is really choked up on his bat here with two strikes. The pitch. Down in the dirt. They're going to call that one a ball. It'll be a full count again. That's a great job by Misi to keep that one in front, too. If that ball skips away at all, it gives Swartz a chance to get down to second, put two in scoring position. Infield playing a little bit out on the outfield, except at the corners. 
Full count, two outs, the pitch. High for ball four, and bases are going to be loaded for the Wolverines. That's a good take, the full count. Have to protect with two strikes, but Smith, good eyes, leading batting average on the team at 385. Able to see that one out of the zone. Here's the DH, Burt Camper stepping in yep. now. Nine yep. home runs yep. on the season for him. Batting 667 with bases loaded, and Rick McCarty is going to step out here and have a conversation with his pitcher. I think this is a good timeout. You look at Camper, who went yard last night, team leading nine home runs. We saw the grand slam and how it changed the game last night, and here we are almost the <laughs> – even the score's a little bit different, but almost the same situation here. Dangerous power hitter at the plate with the bases loaded. McCarty wants to talk pitch sequence here with Compa and make sure the infield's on the on the same page. Make sure Misi and Compa are on the same page as far as pick pitch selection here and make sure that they're on the same card here because this is a, a, a critical, I, you know, put an asterisk by this at bat here is, as Camper comes up to the plate. Yeah, you see the ACU bullpen there. No one necessarily throwing a little bit of tossing going on, but nothing for sure yet. You see Chandler Freeman holding the ball there. But Rick McCarty is going to depart here, and base is loaded with two outs. And like I said, Camper, boy, the splits favor him. 364 with runners on base, 385 with runners on scoring position. You can go on forever with those numbers, but – you got a really good pitcher on the mound right now. Compa deals. Strike on the outside, 69. We really stayed away from that fastball there to lead off the uh, at bat. Trying to get ahead in the count with the fastball. Camper was looking for it. Compa starts him off with a nice breaker. The 0-1. Did he go? First base umpire is going to say no. It'll be a 1-1 count. And Williams, the second baseman, plays straight up the middle. The shift is on here. Anticipating a pull swing. The 1-1. Not the not the pitch he wanted right there. Two one count now. I was just thinking. I mean, an opposite field hit would be disastrous yep. in this situation, Andy. A lot of detractors from the shift will say that here. And a two one count, the pitch, and he offered at it some cheese up the yep. middle. What a breaker! Just such a change. Comp has been hitting 90 91 on the fastball. It breaker. 73, according to the radar gun here in the stadium. Kampa, the 2-2. That one bounces away. They're going to not know what to do. A little bit of confusion on the base paths. And Lovings is going to stay at third. Camper was waving in it, him in, but third base coach said no deal. And there will be no run. Well, the way that ball skirted away from Misi, it went to the right side. I actually think Misi may have been blocking the visual of Lovings down at third base. I don't think Lovings ever identified where the ball was. Of course, Camper giving the come on in sign, but too little, too late. Smith on first, Schwarz on second, Lovings on third. And the full count pitch. Deals way outside for ball four. That's the most fired up walk you'll see in a long time. The run comes through. That's Lovings. And a big at bat for Camper. Burt Camper, the DH, brings one in right here on this walk. Again, I think that could potentially go back to last night, the 3 2 count that McGar had versus Smith. Challenge with a fastball. Smith won the battle there. So. A little bit different pitch selection. Kampa tried to hit the outside corner and just missed. Kampa up to 85 and 
First pitch, pop foul. And that one will go away. Halverson stepping in now. What a response here by the Wolverines. You know, give up eight in the bottom of the third. Already with two in the inning and chance to add more. Sun starts to peek out just a little bit more. The 0-1 pitch is popped up. Williams retreating, everyone retreating. Coming in, the dive. He is safe, it falls in for a hit. And two runs are gonna score for the Wolverines on one that I'm sure the wind was absolutely eating up. So two runs now in this ball game. It is an 8-4 ball game in Abilene, Texas. Well, Reese Borjo in center field did not get a good jump. Had a hard time locating that one in the gray skies, the overcast skies. Did not get a good jump in it. Had some top spin. Williams was going out as well as Payne, the second baseman shortstop. Borjo gave a dive but came up empty. It's now an 8-4 ball game. Be scored a hit for sure, and the single up the middle brings in two. Kampa's got that runner off third. Now that feels probably a little bit better not to have that threat over there as the junior Nate Box steps in. 0 for 2 today with a strikeout. Back in the third inning is Wolverines one batter away from batting through the inning. The pitch on the ground is short. Payne fields over to second and Williams. And the 6-3, 6-4 put out that is, pardon me, will end the inning. But four runs for the Wolverines is a big score. And we're headed to the bottom of the fourth. Stick with us on ESPN+. Plus. Welcome back to Crutcher, Scott Field, Coy and Andy Penny up here in the booth. Well, if, if you're just joining us, there's been a little bit of excitement. 12 runs in the past two rounds for these two teams as they've almost gone both batting through and ACU. That eight run lead we talked about, it may not be enough, Andy, and it's surely looking like it might not be. You definitely want to add some more on. Well, I think the uh, weekend is starting to open up how we anticipated before the weekend started. We anticipated crooked numbers, heavy runs, and it's taken a while. But here over the course of ACU's bottom of the third and Utah Valley's top of the fourth, 12 runs on the board. And man alive, still a lot of baseball to go here as we move to the bottom of the fourth. Garrett Williams steps in, the four-hole man for ACU. As he looks bunt and drops one over on the third side. That one will roll foul, and we're going to try it again. Williams so far in this ball game, one for two, grounded out in the first inning, got on in what was that deadly series of events that happened in the bottom of that third inning where ACU slapped an eight spot on the scorecard. If you're just tuning in, Wildcats had 11 consecutive batters reach the base pass. Eight of those courtesy of hits. Eight consecutive hits. Three walks in there, too. One to start the rally, two at the end of the rally. Eight runs, eight hits for ACU there in the third. Miller gave up two of those hits. Came in for relief in this ball game and Surely needed it. Ethan Folks got absolutely bombarded by ACU bats with two outs and two strikes. Multiple two strike opportunities for the Wolverines in that third inning as the 0-2 pitches. A little flare over to second base and fielded cleanly by Dixon, Dickinson, pardon me. And DJ Van Atten's gonna step in now. Van Atten had that big roper down the line back in the bottom of the third. That was a big hit for ACU. He also used his wheels a little bit. One for two on the day, of course, with those two RBIs. You could really say that broke through the storm. Pitch from him is absolutely tattooed foul. 89 mile per hour pitch from Miller. Coy, that two run double that Van Atten had, the only extra base hit. 
in that eight run inning. It was the only one. Two RBIs. Miller waiting in the 0-1. Another big foul ball from Van Atten. Before we look at the uh, Western Athletic Conference standings, of course, Utah Valley with that win last night, now at five and two, tied with California Baptist. CBU went down last night to UT Arlington, 14-2, and 10 run rolls, seven inning game. The Mavericks beat the Lancers last night. Third Grand foul ball over that right side. Grand Canyon also lost last night to Sacramento State, five to four. So some unusual game ones have really flipped the top portion of the standings. And Andy, I mean, you talk about it. We can talk about it on and on. This whack baseball is always exciting. I mean, these teams are super competitive as Van Atten gets under one to center field. Nate Box there having to back up and keep moving over as he snags that one for the second out of the inning. And Van Atten is down on a fly out. Coy UTA has beaten California Baptist today 5-3. So UTA, who we saw here in Abilene a few weeks ago, AC won two of three in that series, but the Mavericks are now eight and three in conference. They've taken the first two from CBU. CBU started the weekend in first, but UTA is the hot team right now in the WAC. One of Utah Valley's in that conversation too. Oh, absolutely, Andy. Maddox Misi stepping in now. Another ACU player that had a big hit in that inning, had that single, couple RBI. Someone that I, you know, we talked about it has had a rough season and really came through right there as Misi watches Miller's second pitch. It'll be a 2-0 count now. Tarleton has taken the first two from Stephen F. Austin. Tarleton wins 13-3 today. How about the Lumberjacks of SFA? They have lost 22 in a row now. Tough year in Nacogdoches. 2-0 pitch outside. And Andy, you talk about that. That's a program I'm sure everyone wants to see doing good. I mean. Well, except maybe Sam Houston, who has <laughs> departed. And, you know, that rivalry will probably run on forever, the oldest rivalry in the state of Texas. But Stephen F., one of those teams you like to see competitive. A lot of purple teams, obviously, in this conference. But tough year for them as the 3-0 pitch is in there. He finds the strike zone. Well, and we get 3-1 count. ACU will be in Nacogdoches next week. Three games set for Lumberjacks. The 3-1 pitch for Misi is shot out in the left field. Everyone retreating in on it, and there will be a play from Jaden Smith in left field. One, two, three goes the inning. Nine pitches for Miller as we head to the break in the fifth inning. Stick with us on ESPN+. Plus. Hey, 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 gang, we're back. And we got a lefty on the mound, junior from Frisco, Texas. That's Chandler Benson. Andy, what do you know about him? Yeah, the junior from Frisco, the transfer from Nebraska, 5'11". Left-handed pitcher, Chandler Benson. He'll make his eighth appearance of the year, all in relief. 16 and a third innings of work. 12 runs, all earned. 13 strikeouts, four walks, an ERA of 6.61. Compass pitch count just got heavy there in that four-run Wolverine top of the fourth inning. And because of that, Rick McCarty goes ahead and makes the call to the bullpen. The guys from the pen will have to take care of the last five innings today. Compass done his job, leaves with a four-run lead. Chandler Benson, the first arm out of the bullpen. Yeah, for Compass, four innings pitch, six hits, four earned runs, four walks, four strikeouts for him, fours across the board. His ERA goes up to a 3-3-1 on the season. That's a good number for the Wolverines to look at. You see the first pitch right there outside for ball one. Well, for your Utah Valley, you have to be feeling pretty good right now. You give up the eight-run bottom of the third. You cut it in half in the top of the fourth. Miller gives you a 1-2-3 bottom of the fourth on the mound, and you're right back to the plate against a new pitcher. So 
in all reality, I feel like the momentum might be in the visitor's dugout right now. The 2-0 from Benson finds the strike zone. Sun really starting to set here in Abilene, Texas, as that one is roped out into left field, and it will be caught by Miller Lattisaw for the first out of this inning. And Lattisaw had it played well a few steps in as that liner was tailing in a hurry. And a little top spin on, was trying to drop in, but Lattisaw had it played well a few steps in and makes the catch. That was Garrett Broussard, the third baseman for the Wolverines. He went over, he's now 0 for 3 on the day, as you see Cole Jordan stepping in, the right fielder. Came around and scored off a walk in the last inning, that big inning. Started that off, and they really ran away with it there for a little bit. He shoots that one into center field and retreating back and caught by Reese Borjo for the second out. So quick work right now for Chandler Benson. There's already two outs in the inning, Andy. Yeah, Chandler really attacking the zone here. And Utah Valley's hit it well, but right at both outfielders, Lattisaw and Borjo, the pretty hefty run into the gap left center field, but able to get there in plenty of time. Pitch from Benson in there for a strike to Isaac Lovings. Catcher for the Wolverines, or Jordan Lovings, pardon me. It is Isaac, pardon me. I need to trust my scorebook, Andy, every now and then. <laughs> trust myself. He'll see an 0-2, and it's in there for a ball. Loving's one for two today. Watches the one, two, as that one skirts in there for ball two. Doubled in the last inning, came around and scored, of course. He really started the fireworks in that inning. So he watches the 2-2, and I mean crushes one out into left center field, going back at the track, at the wall. It is gone. Home run, Isaac Lovings. His eighth of the season, his 18th RBI of the season, and the Wolverines have cut it down to three in just under two innings. Isaac Lovings goes deep to left center field. Well, found something he liked. Got the barrel on it and drove it to the left center field wall, 380 there in the power alleys. Borjo gave it a look, but that was a no doubter. The guy who did not get the start last night at catcher gets the start today. Two for three, a double, a home run, and three RBIs to his name. Matthew Schwarz steps in here and offers at the first pitch he sees, 86 miles per hour for strike one. Well, Andy, you wondered, you know, could you hit a home run with this wind blowing into <laughs> third base? But when you're strong like that, probably hit it anywhere you want. I think if Utah Valley's in the yard, the, uh, the answer is always yes to that question. They're 53rd of the year, top 10 in the country in home runs. That's their 53rd. Strike three in the zone, and Matthew Schwarz goes down swinging. A good relief inning. For Chandler Benson, he gives up just the big fly. And Utah Valley just trails by three. It's 8-5 on ESPN+. Crutcher, Scott Field, Abilene, Texas. Gwaslin, my friend Andy Penny. Watching an 8-5 ball game in Abilene, Texas, as Mitch Miller comes back out onto the mound. 1.1 innings for him, throw inning in a third, two hits, just the one run and a strikeout for him. He looked really solid in that fourth inning, Andy. Yeah, three up, three down inning. He had three fly ball outs, one in the infield. He's retired four in a row. Started a little shaky as he came in there in relief in the bottom of the third, but able to get out of the inning. Here's that last strikeout there in the uh, top of the fifth. Good looking pitch by Benson to get back 
into the dugout and get the ACU bats back here to the plate. He pitched the contact a little bit and found his way back into it with that looking strikeout and gets out of it. Three runs, though. All the difference we need in this ball game is Miller will see Staley, Greer, and Borjo, the bottom half of ACU's order. Aaron Staley, one for two today. Shows bunt on the first pitch and does not go for it. It'll be a strike either way. Staley, one hit in those two at-bats so far in this ball game. Of course, part of that big eight-run inning for the Wildcats as he watches another strike there. It's 0-2 very quickly now. Well, you can see Broussard, the third baseman, who was playing in at third. He's playing in the infield grass. Now with two strikes, has retreated deep over at third. Staley offers at it and goes down swinging. Mitch Miller, second strike out of the ball game on some decent looking stuff up the middle. That's five in a row retired, two by the strikeout. Overpower Staley with a fastball at 92. Quickly one down. Hey, you're talking about Garrett Broussard. He's playing in again now with Ben Greer. One for two today in this ball game. Strikeout and a single, RBI. I really want to make sure that ACU has no intentions of laying something down. When it's been a left-handed batter, Broussard has played in last step of the infield grass, the synthetic grass, but you can see where he's playing right there on the lip of the dirt. Does not want to allow ACU to drop something down. It's, it's a pull hitter's game. As you can see, the right side of the infield plays very deep. We've seen Dickinson at second. 20, 30 feet into the outfield, playing that second base position. But as soon as there's two strikes, Broussard will retreat back to normal position. Greer gets under that one. I mean, drives it out into right field. They're going back, and it's off the wall. Benjamin Greer, he's headed to third. The throw over to third. He will be out at third. What a relay from the Wolverines. They catch Benjamin Greer trying to take three of them. And they gun him down. What a play. Well, he got the green light over at third base, a head first slide. But man alive, what a relay. As it was out in right field, Jordan takes it off the hop, off the base of the wall, hits the relay man. Broussard puts the tag down. It's a double that won't have much to show for it as he's gunned down at third for a big second out of the inning. What a play. Cole Jordan getting that one in very quickly for the Wolverines. So Reese Borjo steps in now, one for two on the day, an RBI for him, and a strikeout. A lot of RBIs for these ACU bats. Second pitch in there for a strike. It'll be evened up at one and one. And Greer with the double. It's a multiple hit game, his third of the year. But what a relay. Started by Cole Jordan out in right field. Yeah, and that's, and that's not all on Greer. So watch that one skirt in. No flinch from Borjo. That's not all on Greer. He's got the wheels. That was a great yeah. relay from Jordan to Broussard. Well, he's got the wheels, and he got the green light as well. He was, he was looking towards third base as he rounded and got the green light. Borjo <laughs> offers at that one, 2-2 two -two count. Just a combination of speed. That call could have gone either way, really, but great job for Utah Valley. The 2-2 pitch. High for ball three. A good take there for Reese Borjo. Well, look at the shift here, Coy, that they have on Borjo. Here's Dickinson again. You'll see 25, 30 feet out in the right field grass, and Broussard is playing the shortstop position, the third baseman. Reese offers that, that one high and strikes out. Mitch Miller gives up the double, but hey, it doesn't matter. His fielders have his back. 8-5 ball game. We're headed to the sixth inning. Stick with us on ESPN+. Plus. Pretty sights. West Texas sunset, as always, on that first baseline. Quail and Andy Penny as the Wildcats lead the Wolverines 8-5 to five here in this whack ball game. 
and what has been an exciting past few innings, Andy. I owe an apology. I don't do this often. That put out was an 8-6-5 on the beautiful relay. That was Bach that made the play in center field over to Schwarz at second and then Broussard yep. at third. Yeah, my bad out there. I give Nate Bach credit where credit is due to get that Benjamin Greer out. Yeah, how about that sunset, man? I'll tell you what, uh, Utah Valley might have the best backdrop as far as the mountains. Have you seen mm -hmm. Utah Valley? Yeah, oh, absolutely. But it's hard to beat a West Texas sunset here in Abilene too. So uh, great look there from our ACU TV crew. All right, the second baseman, Daniel Dickinson, going to step in now. 0 for 2 on the day. He's got a walk and a strikeout. First pitch will be a ball. Chandler Benson back on the mound, of course, for ACU. Gave up just the one run on that big fly as that one skirts in for ball two. Boy, one other whack series we haven't talked about, UTRGV and Utah Tech. RGV leads Utah Tech today 10-3. to They also won yesterday, so they're trying to win the first two of the series. The 2-1 to Dickinson. Patient on that pitch, and it's a ball. Quick 3-1 count now, Andy. Sacramento State and Grand Canyon will play their second game. About to first pitch here in a few minutes. Sac State the winner last night over the Lopes. Fouled off. Both of these teams, ACU and Utah Valley, have already seen Sacramento State. Yeah, Utah Valley lost that series. ACU won that series. See a 3-2 fouled off. Talk about Sacramento State. They're, they're a lot like GCU when it comes to being competitive. They're yeah. competitive in a lot of sports, Andy. Yeah, yeah no really doubt. Really good football. Yeah. Yeah, unique setup. I uh, believe baseball, baseball, softball may be the only sports they're in the WAC. Is that right? I know they're not I, in I basketball. I do believe that, yeah. That one's popped up to right field. I know that they're one's not, grabbed. I know they're not in basketball for sure. So just don't see much of Sacramento State throughout the year. You've got Greer. That's Greer now yeah. out in right field. And Don't I was just – and D'Alessio's moved over to third now. They've had a bit of a shift here. Back to the original positions we saw last night. This one fouled off. I believe that's Jack Nielsen now over at first base. A couple of changes here in this ballgame for Rick McCarty. After some issues in the infield, that one skirts its way inside. So Aaron Staley is now out of the ball game, who started in right field. That one shot into left field, a base hit, rolls over to Lattisaw. And Smith gets on now. Two for three in the ball game. He's having him another good one, riding the high of that grand slam in that last game, Andy. Just finds one, turns on it, gets it out into left field. Multiple hit game. And came in the weekend, his average at 400 to start the weekend. The grand slam last night, two hits today. Burke Camper stepping in now. That's Smith's 10th multiple hit game of the year. He bounces that one foul. 0 for 1 today, strike out a walk. Got hit. Big runner on now. In the pitch is a strike for Benson. Gets away from Misi. No one will even take a step at all at that one. Of course, Coy, we talk about Sacramento State and where they are in the WAC. How about RGV and the news that came out? TRGV will be leaving the WAC, heading back to the Southland Conference beginning next year. That one gets away from Misi. Smith's going to swipe second on that one. Back-to-back -back trouble at the dish. And now Smith in scoring position with just one out here in the inning. This becomes an RBI opportunity now again for Camper, runner in scoring position. 
when he's been a good bat this season, Andy. The one-two pitch gets away again. And Smith's going to jog his way over to third. He's got 180 feet of free real estate here in this at-bat. Well, Coy, I think the first one was a wild pitch. I think that one was just a pass ball, or at least Meese. It looks like Meese and Benson just weren't on the same page. Meese was anticipating a different pitch, and that ball just sailed right by him. I think that will go more as a pass ball, the first one a wild pitch. But either way, you score it. And Smith goes corner to corner, courtesy of two pitches to get back to the backstop. Well, conversation here between Benson and Meese now. You got 190 feet away. Try to break the flow of this pitch and get some calmness on his pitcher. Here we go with the 2-2. Two -two. That one is, I mean, foul. He got under that one, got every ounce of it he could right on the sweet spot, but blows foul. Smith's the runner at third. A 2-2 pitch. Bounces in there for ball three, and now we got a full count situation. That's a good pitch for Benson. Tried to get Camper to go after it, and he did not. It's a good eye at the plate. Big pitch here. Benson catches his breath. The 3-2. Pop foul. Playable. Oh. And they couldn't see it. Nielsen over at first could not see it. And that one, I mean, it just bounced. It was probably yep. three, four feet away from him. And you yep. could hear people calling out in the crowd where it was. Yeah, extra, extra life for Camper here as he skies that one in foul territory right around the first base coach's box. But Nielsen at first never found it. Dusky sky, just never could find it. It falls in and foul territory. Extra life here for Camper. So we'll try a full count again. Maybe think about that pitch as that one is a check swing. It's going to score a run. The throw over to first from Williams gets the out. But the run will score on the set ground out, and Utah Valley chips away once again. It's a two-run ball game. They'll do a job. ACU infield was playing back. Williams playing up the middle, so a long run for Williams to make the play. Smith breaking on contact. That goes back to the two free passes, the wild pitch and the pass ball, and puts Smith 90 feet away. Camper does a job, gets extra life with the ball not caught in foul territory, and it's an 8-6 eight, eight, ball game. Callan Halverson. Stepping in now, the senior from Guthrie, Oklahoma. Two for three on the day with two RBIs. Sits on that one and will not offer at it for a 1-1 count. Got to think about that pop fly now, Andy. Pitches fouled off. That's the beautiful thing and the frustrating thing about baseball. You have to get all 27 outs. And it's just extra outs. Had a chance to get the camper out, which would have been the second out of the inning on the foul ball pop-up. One, two, he struck him out. Chandler Benson responds right here, but the Wolverines are threatening. Two runs now in this ball game is the difference. It's eight, six. Stick with us, we're going to the bottom of the sixth on ESPN Plus. Welcome back to Abilene, Texas, where the Wolverines have started to slowly dig their way back into this one. Four runs in the fourth for them, one run in the fifth, one run in the sixth, and now it's a two-run ball game, Andy. I tell you, Coy, you know, an eight-nothing ball game at the end of the third, you, you wonder what the response will be. Utah Valley's now scored three innings in a row, and how about the job being done here on the mound again by Utah Valley? 
relief pitching. Mitch Miller has shut down the Wildcat bats over the course of the last two innings. He's retired seven in a row. Yeah, Mitch Miller, I, I mean, you come into a ball game and he looked like he was having a rough day, but he was just in a rough spot, Andy, and he's proved that to us here up in the booth and now working out of a good spot and seeing the top of the ACU order with Zant Payne. Payne a walk and a ground out in this ball game, watches that one for ball one. How about ACU this weekend? 14 innings that they've been to the plate. They've scored 11 runs, but three in the first inning last night, eight in the third inning tonight. Other than that, have not scratched across a run. We saw last night what Bravere did in relief, seven innings of scoreless baseball. Beltron an inning and a third of scoreless baseball. And Tonight, it's been Miller doing the same thing. Mistake looking at my scorebook again. I completely forgot I had to switch sections here. Zant Payne walked twice all the way back in that amazing third inning from ACU. <laughs> See, watches one bounce past him for ball two. Yeah, 14 batters to the plate in that eight-run third inning. No. And 11 consecutive reached. This series, Andy, we've gotten to see what both these offenses can do. No doubt. 2-2, two -two, chopped over to third and playable. Throw over to first is in time for the out. That's Broussard over to Halverson. And this 5-3 will be the first out, Andy. And just a high chop. Halverson has it played well. He's deep over there at third with the two strikes. So. Easy play, plays a chest high on the high chopper and soft throw across the diamond in time. And Andy, this turf can really eat those chops yep. up. Get a lot of bounce off of them. Miller Lattisaw stepping in now. Watches one for a first strike. One for two today, he got a hit by pinch and a single. Played some good left field in this one as he shoots one up the middle. A stab at second base. The throw over to first is wide. Bounces to the dugout, but will not be out of play. And Lattisaw will stay at first. That was Schwarz over to Halverson. So that one passes by. And, man, we've seen this a couple times tonight, Andy. Well, again, here's the shift so far over on the right side of the infield. Swartz, the shortstop, playing to the right of the second base bag, actually has to backhand pick it, moving back to his right. Fields it cleanly, pops up to his feet, makes a poor throw. It's an E6, a first error for the Wolverines tonight. They had it played perfectly. Swartz up the middle, just couldn't make the play. So here's Gino D'Alessio, the ACU slugger. Two for three today, an RBI and a strikeout. Has been a great play for ACU this year. Watches one on the outside for strike two, and he's down to the hole early. Tenth multiple hit game this year with the two singles tonight. The RBI leads the whack in that category as his 31st tonight. Miller sets and deals outside. No activity in the Wolverine bullpen at this point. And Miller's been effective since he came in in the third. And Miller's one of those type of guys who can come in and eat some innings. And he's done a good job of this ball game, allowing his team to slowly but surely claw their way back in here. That's not a Wolverine pun, of course, but finding his way in. <laughs> I was with you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of cats wild animals in this conference. Here's the pitch. That one is reached for, shot to short, over, six. And there will only be one out on that, a very close play as Gino D'Alessio legs one out, and it'll be now a fielder's choice. I was for sure that was going to be a double play there for a minute, Andy. Well, I sure thought so. Another bang-bang play over at first, first base. Utah Valley can turn the double plays. They've turned 26 of them this year. That's 
top ten in the country. So they get the second out, Andy. They get the second, not the third, on that bang-bang play over at first. That middle infield is tough. Great stretch for Halverson at first. Here's Garrett Williams stepping in now. One for three on the ball game. Single for him back in that third inning. I feel like that's the trend when we talk about these batters and say they got a hit back in the third inning. <laughs> well, Wildcats with ten hits, eight of them came in the third. And eight different Wildcats with hits in the third inning. Sam Payne's the only Wildcat without a hit yet tonight, but he's walked twice. The 1-1 one, one to Williams. Pops one foul. There is a deep play, but no one's going to be even able to reach that one as it's on top of the batting cages. So Cole Jordan was running one out. We talk about this eight-run inning. Did you see the Diamondbacks put up 14 in the third last night? I, d I don't think I've seen that on opening day ever, Andy. I've never seen an ERA in the major leagues at 162. <laughs> but uh, somebody on the Rockies staff left – the game last night. Hit the showers with an ERA of 162, not 1.62. Can only get better from there. An offer and a strikeout. Mitch Miller, what an inning for you. You come back out here, get a couple runners on, but hey, you dominate ACU. It's still a two-run ball game, though. The Wildcats lead. Stick with us. We're going to number seven in Abilene, Texas. Hello, friends and neighbors back in Abilene, Texas, in what is an 8-6 ball game. And, well, Andy, you said to me just a minute ago, of course, this is a little unsettling for ACU. They are not comfortable. And here we are, 8-6, seventh inning. Chandler Benson back on the mound for ACU. He's looked pretty decent for the Wildcats. Gotten out of a couple of tough situations, Andy. Yeah, 36 pitches in his relief time, two innings of relief. He came in to start the fifth. He'll come back for his third inning of work. Just two runs on two hits. One of the two runs was earned. That's two strikeouts, 36 pitches. Let's we'll try to work this line up here in the top of the seventh. Nate Bach stepping in now, the center fielder for the Wolverines, who made that stellar play in center field. Watches one outside for strike one. Of course, throwing out Benjamin Greer, who was headed for three. 0 for 3 on the day for him and a strikeout with the bat, but good with the glove in this one. Fouls that one back, and it'll be a quick 0-2 count. You know, Coy Benson is the sixth Wildcat pitcher this weekend. He's the first lefty that we've seen for Rick McCarty. Again, this right-handed dominant lineup for Utah Valley. So Rick McCarty's gone with the righties until here Benson, sixth pitcher of the weekend for ACU. Of course, don't want to use too much of that over. Into the series tomorrow. We'll be on ESPN Plus. We'll have it for you. Me and Andy will be back in the booth. One foul, or pardon me, strikeout. For the first out of this inning. Chandler Benson, third strikeout of the ball game for him. And comes into this one, he's looked pretty good, Andy. I think he's got to feel really good about himself so far. Yeah, that's a good outing. Rick McCarty really likes him out of the bullpen. He's oh, giving quality innings. Up. Sorry, Andy, popped no. up. Looked playable for just a minute, but that wind, of course, fighting it. Well, he's a guy that's going to give McCarty, you know, two innings, maybe three. That's about the, the length. He did go four innings in his first outing of the year versus Northern Illinois, but that was a four-game series weekend where maybe Rick McCarty was stretching some arms a little bit longer. But anywhere from two and a third to – Three and a third, maybe up to four innings for, for Benson. It's a quality outing. One fouled back. Garrett Broussard now the batter for the Wolverines. 0 for 3 on the day for him. Gets that one on the ground, and it bounces off the glove of D'Alessio. ACU continues to have problems at the hot corner. And another runner on now, as we've seen a couple of those get eaten up over on that third base side, Andy. Yeah, second error of the night for the Wildcats. Both have come at 
third base. It's Benjamin Greer earlier in the ball game in the third inning. This time, this one just eats up D'Alessio off the heel of the glove. A few steps to his left, but cannot field it. 24th error of the year for ACU, and I believe they're third this weekend. So now Benson having to deal with a runner on at first as Cole Jordan steps in now, the right fielder. One for two on the day. He had a big double. And he's had some decent swings, just hasn't had necessarily the numbers to vouch for it. Watches one come in for ball two. Said walk back in the fourth. Been a productive bat today. We saw the extra out that Wildcats gave the Wolverines in the sixth inning turn into a run. We'll see if the same happens here in the seventh. Of course, in the sixth, it was a pop-up and foul territory that Jack Nielsen lost in the lights, couldn't make the catch. It gave an extra pitch to Burt Camper, who then had an RBI ground out. So Benson now have to work out of a 3-1 count. Had a comeback pitch that looked really good, but – Tough spot now. Got to give something up the middle. The pitch on the ground. Fielded cleanly by Payne. Over to Williams. On to Nielsen at first. He couldn't paint it any better. A 6-4-3 cuts down the inning. And Chandler Benson, have yourself an outing. Wildcats leave the Wolverines 8-6. We're headed to the bottom of the seventh inning. Stick with us on ESPN+. Plus. Fifty-nine, sixty. We are two hours, 20 minutes into this ball game here in Abilene, Texas on the dot. Coy Oslin and Andy Penny. Bottom of the seventh inning. It's a two-run ball game, Andy. Fourteen I, runs on the board. I think tonight has played out how we anticipated. Not maybe the runs and clumps like we've seen. All eight for ACU in the third, four for Utah Valley in the fourth. But I think this is kind of – what we anticipated on the weekend. Late innings, a lot of runs on the board, nothing really decided. It would come into, you know, relief pitching. How could the bullpen close out games? And thus far, Benson for ACU, Miller for Utah Valley have been have been clutch. So we move to the bottom of the seventh. Yeah, and the big man DJ Van Atten is gonna step in now. Had a double in the third inning, but other than that. One for three. Those two RBI, though, really lit ACU up. First pitch to him. He offers at it and shoots it over to the hot corner. Brassard over to first. Halverson's there for the out in the long 5-3 put out on the first pitch. Goes after the first one. Miller gives it to him and yeah, one pitch, one out. Miller now at three and two-thirds innings of work. One run, three hits. Two of those hits came in that third inning. Gave up a one-up, one-out double to Benjamin Greer that he tried to stretch to a triple and was thrown out at third. That's the only hit that Miller's given up since the third inning. And he's looked stellar, Andy. I mean, you, you can talk about the numbers, but the pitches look great also. And Maddox Meese steps in now, 0-1-1 already. Or 1-0, pardon me. Now there's the strike. It's 1-1. You know, you talk about the story of this ball game unfolding. Yesterday was the story of, hey, how many can we hit in a, in, a, in a batch? But today has been small ball. As that one up the middle for Misi, it's going to be easy to field, but the throw is the hard part. They get him at first in a 5-3 put out. What a play by Dixon, Dickinson at second, pardon me. Well, there's a reason he was named the preseason WAC player of the year. Part of it's with his bat. The rest of it's with his glove. It started early. He made two putouts in the first, two putouts in the second, and that one is most impressive one as the night. Long run. He's been playing deep in the hole again in the outfield grass. Long run back up the middle, backhanded pick, sidearm sling, and it's in time to get Meese over at first. Here's Jack Nielsen now. He 
came into this ball game. We weren't sure if he was going to be a defensive substitution permanently or just to play first base. He came in and covered for D'Alessio. He's pinch hitting for Aaron Staley, who had been uh, – pardon me, he'd been one for three in the ball game, had a single a strikeout and a ground out. Now Nielsen steps in here to cover as he offers on one low and away. Nielsen four for 11 on the year, 364 the average. All of those singles, does have five RBIs. The pitch to the AC first baseman is far and away. Of course, Nielsen the junior from Southlake, Southlake Carroll High School. Former teammate, if you remember Homer Bush Jr. who played at Grand Canyon last year. Homer Bush Jr. starting the year in double A this year. Saw that yesterday. High school teammates. Pitch outside for a ball. Yeah, and you, you talk about those guys that came out of that area of Texas, a lot of them, Logan Britt, an ACU alumni, Bobby Witt Jr. Oh, yeah, Colleyville Heritage High School, those two guys. You got guys that came out of that class of Texas baseball, and they've done great things. That one fouled off on the right side. Miller looks like he's starting to labor, but boy, pitches would tell you otherwise. Pitch up the middle. He got him looking. Backwards K in the book. Mitch Miller, have yourself a day. He gets a big strikeout. Nothing comes as you see some good defense from ACU. It's 8-6 as we're headed to number eight in Abilene, Texas. New pitcher on the mound in an 8-6 ball game, Chan or Chandler Grenade. Caden Grenade, I'm so sorry about that. Steps on the mound now, the right-handed pitcher for ACU from Denton, Texas, and Navarro College. And to tell you about him and to take us home for the rest of the ball game is going to be my friend Andy Penny. Yeah, thanks, Coy. Back to the right-handed arms here for Coach Rick McCarty as Grenade comes in. His ninth appearance on the year. 0-1's the record. 3.52 is the ERA. 15 in the third innings of work. 18 strikeouts, nine walks for Grenade. As you mentioned, the Navarro College transfer has not pitched in two weeks since uh, the series versus UT Arlington. Went two-thirds of an inning. One run on uh, one hit. Comes in in a big spot here, top of the eighth. ACU has the 8-6 lead. Eight runs, ten hits, two errors for the Wildcats. 6-8-1 and one for the Wolverines. Toughest out of the lineup here for Utah Valley tonight's been Isaac Lovings, two for three. He's got an RBI double and a home run. He scored twice. So ACU scored eight in the bottom of the third to take the 8-0 lead. Utah Valley with four in the fourth, one in the fifth, one in the sixth, chipping away at that what was an eight-run deficit. Have it back to an eight-six game. Grenade pitch, swung on and missed. It's one and two. Talk about that. Seven runners left on base for the Wolverines, Andy. That's a big number right there, especially as this one continues to unfurl. But for Grenade, I mean, a lot of confidence being shown in him by Rick McCarty. As he works out of the stretch, swing and a miss. He start off Lovings sits him down on the strikeout. Big first inning here in the top of the eighth. 90 miles per hour on that strikeout. That's a big out right there here late in this ball game of Isaac Lovings. One up, one down for Matthew Schwartz, the shortstop. One for three tonight, a single and a run scored in that four-run fourth. Grenade is first offering as he works out of the stretch. Grenade's longest outing this year, three innings. He's done that twice. He did that versus Oklahoma State back on February 21st. Also down in the three-game series versus Texas A&M Corpus Christi earlier this month. Swartz again one for three tonight. He was one for three last night, two for six in the series. 
2-0, lifted foul, two balls and one strike. Game three of the series is tomorrow afternoon, a Saturday matinee at 12.05 Central Time, first pitch for ACU and UVU. So been a great series. As Utah Valley, the better of ACU last night, 7-3. to three. And they see right now up 8-6. to six. 11 a.m. for those of our viewers, it'll be on Mountain Time. <laughs> yeah. There's a ball hit. Ricochets maybe off the glove of Grenade, but it finds Garrett Williams at second base. Either way, Williams makes the play. Two up, two down here in the eighth. Yeah, I want to be respectful of the travel schedule for Utah Valley. Headed back home tomorrow after game three, finale of the series. ACU last week in Sacramento played early. So we're back to the top of the lineup, Daniel Dixon. ACU played last week Sacramento State. All sorts of travel issues getting home, did not get home until 4 a.m. in the morning, Monday morning. That was after like a noon first pitch happened. Noon central first pitch at Sacramento. Dixon today 0 for 3 with a walk. Dickinson. Hit down the right field line. Nielsen in foul territory. Runs out of, ter out of room. It's in the stands. Quickly, no balls and two strikes. Yeah, and you're talking about that travel schedule there, Randy. I mean, that's something you got to love about college baseball. Coaches working together, trying to figure out what's best for each team, moving games around. I know oh, yeah. you and I did a game a couple weeks ago that got moved, uh, moved forward about three hours almost. Yeah, weather in the in the area. Grenade will skip this one in. One ball and two strikes. Brett Landman will get the ball tomorrow for ACU. Currently, Utah Valley has to be announced. We anticipate that Chase Hennessy might start again tomorrow. He started last night for the Wolverines. Could start again tomorrow. There's the one, two. Ground ball up the middle. Paying it short. Can't field it cleanly. And Dickinson will be on over at first base with two outs. We'll wait for the official call. I think that's a ball that should have been played, and they will call it an error. E6, third error tonight for ACU, and the inning continues. Very out of character for ACU, Andy, and, and we've seen it just a couple of times. It's been that left side of the infield. It's just had some problems tonight. Of course, Zant Payne plays over there quite a bit, but we've seen some movement at third, and they got a runner on. Tying run at the plate. And for the first time, the tying run will come to the plate. It's Jaden Smith. Two for three tonight. Two singles, a walk, two runs score. And the loudest blast of the weekend, the grand slam last night in the top of the seventh. Check swing here. Does he go? Yes. John Perez, home plate umpire, says yes. One ball, one strike. Utah Valley at five and two in the conference. Currently tied with California Baptist. ACU at six and four. Two of the top five teams on the diamond this weekend. This one gets away from Misi. Dickinson will move up first to second. Runner in scoring position and a 2-1 count. Skin ACU gives up another 180 feet right there. And the air gets him on. The wild pitch yeah. gets him to second. Two outs. You don't need to worry too much, though, about him at second. Focus on what you got at the plate. Grenade set. Doesn't even give a look back at second. Pitch. Chopper, third base side with foul. Two balls and two strikes. You have a favorite superstition? Two balls, two strikes, two outs? A lot of superstition. Yeah. Two's all across the board. Well, and even tonight, you've seen a couple two strikes, two outs options have some damage happen. Renee set and look at second. Runner on the move. The 2 2 misses. No throw down to third. And Dickinson is 90 feet away in a full count. Here to Jaden Smith. This becomes a big pitch. Trying to keep the tying run off the base pass with two outs. Smith ready. Payoff pitch. Swung on and missed. Macy will have to throw down to first. 
He will in time. Two strikeouts in the inning for Caden Grenet, and the side is retired. We'll move to the bottom of the eighth. ACU hanging on to that 8-6 lead here at Cruncher Scott in Abilene. Eight six Wildcats. We move to the bottom of the eighth. We talked about tomorrow is the third game of this series. Here's a look at what's coming up for both teams. First for the Wildcats, it's a four-game road trip after tomorrow, a midweek in Austin versus the Longhorns of Texas on the road at SFA next weekend for Utah Valley. Of course, they'll wrap up the series tomorrow before heading back to Utah. They'll be on the road to midweeks versus the Utes of Utah, and then they will be uh, on the road at Utah Tech next week as well. Lengthy road trip here for the Wolverines, but they're playing their best baseball. Winners of nine of their last ten, six in a row. Try to shut down ACU here in the bottom of the eighth. Wildcats the 8-6 lead. One more chance for insurance here for the Wildcats. Greer, Borjo, and Payne scheduled to bat. Miller still on the mound. Came in in relief there in the third inning. Four and a third innings of work, one run, three hits. Greer swings through the first. Greer's having a nice night tonight, Coy, two for three, an RBI single, a run scored, a double as well. Miller works out of that stretch. Second pitch, a fastball for a strike. 70 pitches thus far for Miller. Starter tonight, Ethan Folks went two and two-thirds innings, cruised through the first two innings, ran into trouble in the third. ACU scored all eight runs in the bottom of the third inning. Eleven consecutive ACU batters reached safely. Eight on hits, three on free passes. 0-2 oh here to Greer. Stay alive. Again for ACU this weekend, nine innings last night, seven tonight, 16 innings. They've only scored in two innings. They scored all three last night in the first and all eight tonight in the third. Here's the 0-2. Swung on and missed. Greer down on strikes. Strikeout number six for Miller. Taking a look at the replay here. Just froze him up there, and it's a tough pitch to hit, and you got to swing at it in that situation. And talk a lot about, you know, this ball game and, and yesterday's ball game. You're a couple pitches away from this being a different series. I mean, I mean, either way for either team. So Reese Boro, one for three tonight, an RBI single in that eight run third. He has one of the three hits since Miller came in. He's starting to really solidify himself in center field. The freshman, the local product at a Wiley High School here in Abilene. That center field position has been a little bit of a rotating door. Holden Rook has been out in center field. We've seen Rance Ratke out in center field. Borjo's been out here, been out there this weekend in the series. He played the finale out in Sacramento as well. Two balls and one strike. You know, Rick McCarty not scared to recruit in the Abilene area. You know, he will do that at the Division One level. You got a place like Wiley that turns out a lot of good ball players historically. Guys like Zach Smith, who's on ACU's coaching staff oh, yeah. now. Three and one, the count. That'll be upstairs. It's a one-out walk. Orho on the base pass for the second time tonight. I'll be interested to see if Rick McCarty might get some wheels turning, trying to get Boro in scoring position, trying to get an insurance run here in the bottom of the eighth. We got speed here with Zant Payne coming up to bat. Eddie Smith out of the Dug out, that might be the end for Miller. If it is, it's been a great effort. The bullpen work for the Wolverines all weekend long has been 
something spectacular. I haven't seen the official call yet here, but Miller at 80 pitches. Four and two-thirds innings of work. Brought that ERA down from a 212 to a 208. Feeling good about himself, probably. Braden Balver went 107 pitches last night. Miller is at 80, and no call to the bullpen. Coach Smith will stay here with Miller. Tarleton has won the first two games with SFA this weekend, 13-3 winner today. UT Arlington also has beaten California Baptist again today. They've won the first two, 5-3 the final. Grand Canyon an early lead on Sacramento State tonight, 2-0 bottom of the third. Here's Zant Payne. Shows bunt, pulls it back, takes a strike. Payne the only Wildcat without a hit yet tonight, but he has walked twice, scored a run. And we put an asterisk by that first walk. Two outs, bottom of the third. He was down 0-2 in the count. Fought back to get a walk. The first of 11 consecutive Wildcats to reach. Walked twice in that. Went all the way through the lineup, came back to Payne. He walked again in the third. Down in the count here, 0-2. That's on the inside. Gets away. Borjo was on the move anyway. He'll get a stolen base. Pitch does go back to the backstop, but Borjo on the move, so be credited with a stolen base. And the force out now gone at second, Andy. Yeah, I thought Rick McCarty might try to be aggressive here and get Borjo into scoring position with one out. Chance for Payne to drive him in. Ground ball, right side, that'll advance the runner. Dickinson to play over at first. Second out here at the bottom of the eighth. Borjo moves up to third. Kept them out of the double play and gets Borjo 90 feet away. Yeah, Miller Lattisaw coming up. This is a good sack hit right here. Yep, do a job, hit it behind the runner. Good positioning for that Utah Valley infield, too. Lattice saw the single, the stolen base, the run scored back in the third. He's only hit tonight. He's also been hit by a pitch. Miller versus Miller. Lattice saw will sky one into left field. Smith, he'll find it in the West Texas sky. He'll make the catch. And the side is retired. We'll go to the ninth, ACU. They've got a two-run lead here on Utah Valley. Big ninth inning coming up. <laughs> Top of the ninth. ACU the 8-6 lead. Eight runs, ten hits, three errors. Utah Valley, six runs, eight hits, one error. As Caden Grenade in for his second inning, he'll try to Shut things down here in the top of the ninth. Don't want to eat my words, Andy, but I think this is a good call right here. Guy came out and did really good, looked solid. Why not let him run with that energy? If he can carry it through this inning, why not carry it throughout the rest of the season? Wildcats eight in the third, the eight nothing lead. Utah Valley four in the fourth, one in the fifth, one in the sixth. That's where we are here as we move to the top of the ninth. Burt Camper will lead it off. Amber's been on the base pass twice, once hit by a pitch, once walked. There's an RBI ground out. Also a bases loaded RBI walk, so two RBIs to his name tonight. Grenade out of the stretch to get things started. This one hit a long way in left field. Lattice on the warning track will make the catch. That was a line shot. The wind may have pushed it down, had a lot of top spin on it. Lattisaw was playing deep, was able to make the catch. Andy, I was sure he had it. I mean, off the bat, that sounded like a jolt and just a bit short. And, and, and now it, one out on that play, I'll take that any day if I may see you. The camper hit it on the screws, just did not 
get quite enough lift to get it out of the ballpark. Now first pitch swinging into center field. This one deep, Borjo, a few steps shy of the warning track. Now back in, he'll make the catch. Two pitches, two outs here in the top of the ninth. I'd like to say we're going to get to see a three-pitch inning, Andy. That'd be cool, but I don't think that's going to be the situation here. And two quick flyouts, though, on two pitches that were very hittable. And I think maybe with a little less wind, these were different situations. And the wind pushing in. It's been pushing in all night from right field, keeping the ball in the ballpark. Last opportunity here for the Wolverines, Nate Bach. 0 for 4 tonight, does have a fielder's choice. Two strikeouts. Here's a guy you'd like to see get a hit right here. And he skips this one in. It's 1 and 1. Again, game three is tomorrow, a 12.05 central first pitch here from Crutcher Scott Field. 11.05 in the mountain time zone. Brett Landman on the mound for ACU. The 1-1, one, one. lifted out of play. It's one ball and two strikes. Two of the top teams in the whack coming down to the top of the ninth. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Grenade set. Bach is ready. Kick, one, two. Fouled off, we'll do it again. Good defensive swing there from Bach. Keeping this ball game going. Wolverines have been good with two strikes, protecting the plate. We'll set it up again, one and two. Pitch, swung on and missed for strike three. It's a one, two, three, top of the ninth. The Wildcats have evened up the series. An eight, six final from Crutcher Scott tonight, Coy. Yeah, Andy, and, and I love me a rubber match on a Saturday afternoon. And what a ball game this was for ACU. That third inning, eight runs, that's all they needed and uh, the Wolverines, everything we thought we'd see from them. We'll see the rubber match tomorrow afternoon at 12.05, first pitch. Until then, this has been a presentation of the Western Athletic Conference on ESPN. All games airing on the ESPN Networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. Until tomorrow afternoon, for Coy Oslin and the whole crew led by Kerry Johnston, I'm Andy Penny saying take care. So long, good night from Abilene, Texas. <laughs>